Boom. Sup, nerds? How's it going? It's Saturday, so that means it's Skyrim Day. With your favorite other bearded nerd, Karn. It's me. Uh, let's see, who do we have? We have the End King. Talking about Super Tramp being such a great band. Um, I gotta look them up. Super Tramp is a uh, band that I've heard of. Can't think of any of their songs, but I'm sure if I heard one of their songs, I would recognize it immediately. <laughs> uh, Magus is lurking, no problem, buddy. Enjoy your lurk. Um, the Raven Queen has an apartment fully stocked of food, which is making me jealous because I don't have any food in the house right now. Gotta go shopping probably tomorrow. And Maldoroth, it's been forever, buddy. How you been? Feel like I never get to see you anymore. I'm kidding, I just came from Maldoroth's stream. <laughs> Gavin Gaines, welcome, buddy. Magus was here before I came in. Oh, lurking. Um, all right. Sounds like we got enough for a party. Let's start, uh, let's start mingling, shall we? Uh, so here we go. We got the Steger, and we are right outside of the Serpent Stone. We're doing the sort of rite of passage for Galmar before he's going to let us join the ranks proper of the Stormcloaks. So we are way out here in the middle of the Sea of Ghosts. Uh, we have to kill an Ice Wraith all by ourselves. Um, we'll get the Ser Serpent Stone while we're at it. That's one of the things I still need to do with this guy is go around and find all the standing stones to get the bonus. Off the top of my head, I don't know what the Andromeda bonus is for the Ritual Stone. Um, it's strong enough on its own, maybe even OP. Uh, so I don't know that we need the bonus, but I kind of want the bonus, even not even knowing what it is off the top of my head. Maybe we'll look that up. Uh, but first, we got an ice race to kill. And while we're up here, I think we're going to get started on the um, the college quest line here, too. Because I think that the Galder Amulet is going to be an awesome tool to add to our arsenal here. Uh, we are a very hybrid build, and the Galder Amulet is a very hybrid item. And with Zim's Immersive Artifacts, it's going to make quite the difference for us. Especially for a, a hybrid mage sneak warrior like we are. <laughs> oh, you just came from his uh, stream too. Uh, I think you were lurking just as I just as I entered Maldoroth's stream. Um, all right, let's get started here. Let's take the uh, free cam away. Now I waited until nighttime in order to do this, so we'd have the cover of darkness. But uh, it's a very bright night out. The moon is just shining like crazy behind those clouds. It's almost making like a neon light effect over here. Or a fluorescent light effect. Um, we had some trouble with this in the first iteration of this guy. But that was before we had Ghost Walk. It's just the one, right? Yeah, I don't think <laughs> the night is going to give us any kind of advantage here. <sighs> Let's try. So I'm going to use this pillar for cover. I'm going to pop Ghost Walk here. That's going to make us invisible. Hopefully it doesn't alert. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I was just going to say, I had to fight some, some animals to get here. 25% less effective with melee weapons. That's not good, but I do have some uh, cure disease potions ready to go. There we go. There we go. All right, let's see how this goes. So if stealth fails me here, um, I might have some wolves hooked up to the ritual stone that can help me. Oh yeah, my illusion skill is still like so minuscule that I get barely any time. So maybe we need to get a little bit closer. Okay, we did. Oh, no. We do have a wolf around here somewhere. I heard him barking. He's coming right at us. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Wowzers. Okay, so we are uh, still kind of uh, low level here, huh? 
<laughs> R.A.P. indeed. Um, yeah, all right. I'm getting a little big for our britches here. Galmar, you son of a bitch. He knew what he was getting us into. Saber cats, no problem. Ice wraiths, instant death. All right, so I think... So we did hear the wolf spirits pop, like, immediately once we were discovered, once we hit that sneak attack. But I think what happened is it, the Ice Wraith just wiped him out immediately. So I think what we're going to want to do is pop the Undying Ghost pretty much immediately. We, we only try to rely on this guy when we actually really need him or when the Ritual Stone is depleted. Don't be a macadamia. <laughs> Oh, stop moving. <sighs> Pain in my ass. The End King, what's up? The hell is he getting all pissed off at? Hard enough to hit these guys in third person when but when you're invisible it's damn near impossible <sighs> i hate ice raids so much we'll get them no one hides from the dead get them buddy Okay. The lip well, the Undying Ghost helped quite a bit there, huh? Yeah, this guy's really good. So, um, this is a spell added by the uh, full AE upgrade. If you paid the extra, you know, however many, probably, I got it on sale for like super cheap, like 15 bucks or something like that. And then, Ice Wraiths just want Huggles. <laughs> Um, then you can find this up at the Ritual Stone, which was the stone we took anyway, so that kind of fits with, like, role-playing purposes and stuff, I think. A little bit. But this thing also fits with the Shaman, uh, the whole Shaman concept of being, like, a conduit to the spirit world, right? It's a novice-level spell that scales with your, um, with your mana levels. So the more... Alright, so when you cast this guy, it depletes all of your mana, right? And then, based on how much mana you spent on him, is how strong he is. Um, probably in terms of, like, health and damage output and all that. It's kind of cagey. I need to look at the wiki and see exactly what that thing is doing, or maybe pull it up in the creation kit. Um, consumes all magic and summons an undying ghost for a scaled level of time. The ghost attributes are equal to twice the amount of magicka consumed. Okay, so attributes, that's going to be health, uh, stamina, and magicka, right? Um, don't know about level or damage output or anything like that, but he seems pretty strong, at least at level 17. So, uh, yeah, I got to look up uh, details on that and see how much damage he's doing or anything. Uh, so that's good. All right, let's head back to the shoreline. Um, we can meet uh, Tolf Deer and the rest of the class at Sarthal, probably in the morning. We'll get some rest after this. We don't really need cover of nightfall if we're uh, if we're underground. So let's get some rest, shall we? Maybe boost our XP a little bit. Ice Rays made me wish this game had vats. Indeed, exactly, 100%. They never stop moving. They're like a shark in that regard, right? They're constantly moving all over the place. So they're very hard to hit, even with like a melee sneak attack. Okay, we're going to avoid that shipwreck for now. Or not. Maybe we could kill some bandits on the way home, huh? 
Um, so my plan is to head back to the shoreline where we started the original character with the with the camp. Maybe grab ourselves a free horse and feel ya. Not sure if that horse spawns there. Let's go around this way. Not sure if that horse spawns there outside of uh, Unbound. I think it does. We shall see. I remember the first time we came through um, and did this with the first character. There were like snowy saber cats. There was like three of them all in one island. Um, and there were like bears. It was crazy. It was nuts. It was hard just getting back to uh, to the shoreline. Somebody saw us already. Who? Oh. <laughs> God, sneaky. Ooh, what's this? Iron ore, don't mind if I do. Still need to level up the smithing skill. Iron is fan freaking fantastic for that. So how's everybody doing this weekend? What you been playing? Got back into Diablo 4 myself and I've been uh, hitting Starfield really hard. The reason I'm not doing more Starfield content is right now the uh, end game for Starfield is, you know, just blasting New Game Plus levels until you get to uh, New Game Plus 10, <clears throat> where you have all the strongest space powers and you have unlocked all the Guardian armor, um, or the Starborn armor, and then you can kind of like settle down and do the shipbuilding and, and settlements. So of course you can play it however you want, but I think that's how the game was meant to be played. Do new new game plus until you're uh, completely disconnected from the main quest line, or completely disconnected from uh, you know just getting power and everything, and then you settle back down and do the main quest line again and do all your permanent stuff. Okay, so both of these guys are kind of looking at each other, which makes it hard to take on one of them. So I think the uh, the bandit chief is actually around the corner over here. All right, let's go all the way around to the other side. We'll see if we can sneak past that other dude on the other side. Get into the ship part of it where the bandit leader is located. And I think there's also an archer or something over on the other side on that other island over there. Trying to do this tactically, you know? It's going to be modders all over again. Yeah. Um, I think they said the creation kit is uh, set to release on February. Yeah, and I saw that article you posted on Discord, Magus, about the... Um, the load order stuff. I think it's something that modders can work around if they have to. But that will be a giant pain in the ass for sure. So I hope they get that fixed before they release the modding tools. Um, but yeah, I, I have high hopes for the DLCs. Uh, BGS is, is usually pretty solid with the DLCs. They have a really good um, track record of, of the major expansions. Uh, Dragonborn was awesome. Um, The first one in Skyrim, oh geez, now I'm forgetting what it's called. The vampire one was awesome. There he is. Okay. Most, uh, like, most of the stuff for Oblivion was awesome. Fallout 3 had some awesome stuff. Fallout 4 had some really awesome stuff. This what you want, huh? Did you hear something? That guy just completely decimate the one wolf I had. Yeah, the Fallout 4 stuff was really good too. Um 
People keep going on and on about how they have improved Fallout 76. I've never played it, but a lot of the different seasons and expansions they've had for that game have been really good too, from what I've heard. It's just not my kind of thing. Ooh, okay. Surprised he didn't see me like immediately there. Oh, he went down. Or no, that's another. Okay, he's coming back around this other way. Wow, this uh, detection meter is taking forever to reset here, huh? I think I really need that silent casting perk. Uh, I do have a level up waiting. We'll use that tactically. I think it might be the uh, spell. Uh, it might be visions of opportunity or whatever. Both the one that I have casted on myself and the one that keeps moving. From enemy to enemy over here. Ah, to hell with it. It's not going down. Which means I have to cast like a thousand muffle spells here. <laughs> In order to get my level up to the point where... Okay, what the hell? You're just not fighting the chief? Where the hell did he go? You kidding me? Now somebody the sees me. Comes for us all. Does it? Because you're not doing anything. Alright, try it again over here. Okay, just need to watch out for this archer over here. I'm focused on her. Or him, I guess. Okay. Swinging that big old hammer. Both of them. Okay. Well, I guess that's how a hybrid is supposed to work, at least early in the game, before you have levels in absolutely everything. Kind of like the shield, but it's the heavy variant. Still worth something, though. I think the new game plus kind of uh, ruins it, considering how much content is already there. Uh, you just rush through the plus games um, till number 10. Yeah, so, I mean, that's the way I'm, I'm thinking of it. Um, that's not how you have to play it, right? Uh, but there is a lot of content there in the New Game Plus that you miss if you don't if you don't do it. And far as far as like dialogue uh, options and things like that, there is. A, ooh, that's kind of nice. I wonder if that's better than the one I have. Um, at least from what I've seen, there's like dialogue options and a, a little bit of story in the New Game Plus stuff, but none of it like really changes except for when you first enter the lodge. You can kind of get some some weird shit. Uh, every now and then I think there's like a something like a five percent chance of something weird happening something different um, than what normally happens and I haven't seen that I'm in new game plus six right now getting really close to going into new game seven and it, nothing's popped for me yet <laughs> I'm kind of disappointed about that uh, but it will it's, it's kind of become like a science for me too now. Like, okay, now we're going to get the powers. The problem with that is I haven't been doing any content for it because it's just doing the temples um, over and over and over again on stream is just not compelling footage, right? Doing that stupid little uh, puzzle where you get all the little anomalies and then fly through the little portal. Um, there's only so many times that I think people are willing to see that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gathering the artifacts is a little funner, though. Uh, the problem is you kind of you kind of got to do both in a certain order if you want to get all of the powers in every every playthrough. 
I'll be honest, doesn't give me hope for ES6 if they plan to milk Starfield like Todd mentioned. Um, I think ES6 is a special case, right? ES, Elder Scrolls has always been like a special thing, um, regardless of whatever else they have going on, right? Um, Fallout 3 won all kinds of Game of the Year awards, right? But then Skyrim came out and blew it completely out of the water. Um, so, I don't know. <clears throat> For everything that I expected, uh, Starfield blew my expectations like completely out of the water. I'm very happy with Starfield. I still am. Um, there are some things that I would like to see them refine or change up before Elder Scrolls 6 comes out. Uh, one of them is the perks. They're terrible. Uh, they're, they don't have much in the way of build craft, um, but they've always been pretty bad, to be honest. Skyrim, uh, vanilla Skyrim was all right. I think Fallout 4 was a lot, it was a downgrade in a lot of ways. Um, there was room in Skyrim for a lot of weird, crazy stuff that you can do in the vanilla perk tree, uh, even though it's kind of small, uninspired, in a lot of ways. Um, and that can be fixed with perks, and that has been fixed with perks. Jeebus. Now, I know I have... Sorry, I gotta focus on this for a little bit. I know I have some paralysis poisons here. Tell you what, you start running so I can stab you in the back. Okay. <laughs> start spamming paralysis poisons. We're gonna get our undying ghost out here too to help out. Okay, took care of that one ghost pretty pretty well. Or that one bear pretty well. Completely whiffing on this one for some reason. Such an abrupt end to our game. Okay. Tactically that this I think this uh progression works pretty well. So um start with sneak. Uh get a sneak attack if you can. Once you get caught, then the Ritual Stone kicks in. Um, if your enemies are strong enough to get through your Ritual Spirits, then um, then you cast the Undying Ghost. Use him as a meat shield and just hack away. Now, as we get more perks into like the Dagger Tree, um, each one of those normal attacks are going to have a, a stacking bleed effect, uh, which is how daggers work in this game. They're little more damage over time with the bleed effect than they are just straight up damage like you would get with any of the other weapons. Um, so that's why you see me hacking away and not using a whole lot of power attacks just yet. Where did these other wolves go? Oh, there they are. I see them. I think they chase something up the hill and then this is where they're supposed to be stationed. That's right, turn the other way. Nothing to see here. I'm gonna do a quick save here though, just in case we lose all this progress with a death. That ice wraith just completely like one hit or quittered us. <laughs> Fighting two bears with that dinky knife. I know we made it work though. Oh no, they were chasing a rabbit down here. Score one for the bad guys, right? Ah, crap. Caladran, welcome, welcome. Yeah, I'm hoping uh, Starfield was... You know, they were trying to do something new, and they were trying out some new ideas and everything. Uh, a lot of them worked well, I think. Um, some of them fell a little flat, in my opinion. But um, I'm hoping they kind of go back to 
some things that are tried and true and everything for Elder Scrolls 6. Uh, that, that's still a ways away, right? That's, that's years away. And I'm sure they'll take what they've learned from Starfield. Put it into Elder Scrolls 6. Like what people liked, what they didn't, some things they want to try here and there. And I'm okay with that. I'm here for it. Uh, I, I really liked Starfield. I think it was a really good release for them. It was their biggest release ever. There's a lot of mixed reviews, but if you go back and look at the reviews of like Skyrim, uh, even uh, Fallout 4, there are a lot of mixed reviews for those too. It's good for a new game, not great, not terrible. Content and lore is definitely limited though. Yeah, for a completely new IP, though, I think they did pretty good on the world building and lore uh, aspect of things. Um, Fallout and Elder Scrolls have been established for a long time. Fallout before, like, way before they even took over the, the property had a, a, an enormous amount of, of lore attached to it. Um, Starfield's completely new. They had to make all that up from scratch. Um... And I think they did a pretty good job, but it still has uh, a lot of room for, like, fleshing out, right? Uh, maybe not in terms of exactly everything that happened, but maybe um, just some more details, you know, about... Um, details about Earth, uh, details about, you know, what the hell even the artifacts in the Starborn are. Maybe the origins of those guys, because we got kind of a chicken and an egg situation going on now. Wow, it's getting really dark out here. Got like a fog or something rolling in. Will Riggins, welcome, welcome, buddy. My only gripe with Starfield is no lore explanation for the unity in this. Oh yeah, that's what I, would, I just mentioned. Um, yeah, I'm wondering if they're going to um, uh, touch on that. It, oh, God. That guy came out of nowhere. Don't kill my free horse. Woo okay. Had <laughs> the ghost of the horkers come help me with these bears. So this is a free horse. It's not marked as stolen. So we can just take it. Uh, no ramifications whatsoever. Um, and it counts as an owned horse because convenient horses just procced there. We're good. Evaluate your riding skills, huh? I already know everything about writing. Let's get prepared. Boom. Now, this is a starting place for Skyrim Unbound. This is where it started us randomly at the beginning of the... Um, At the beginning of our first playthrough of this, before I decided I needed to get some uh, get some new skills and everything, the, the different direction I wanted to go with the build itself, roleplay I think is solid. All right, let's uh, rename. Here we go. Oh no, I think it was the Y. Okay, um, so you also get a free camp here with a free fire and all that if you're running Frostfall, uh, keep you warm. Uh, pretty good place. This looks like a cave, but it's not. <laughs> Okay, let's sleep until a reasonable amount in the morning. Uh, 
Uh, compared to what people have shown me of Cyberpunk 2077, that game blows nearly everything. Well, two very, very completely, that's apples and oranges. 100% apples and oranges. You can't say, you know, Cyberpunk is better because of this. Starfield is better because of this, because they, uh, they go about it in two very, 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 very different ways. Um, Cyberpunk, uh, is very narrowly scoped. Um, it, it doesn't open up the entire world to you as far as storytelling, character progression. It's, you're playing V, you're playing V story, you don't get to make up your story. Um, dynamic elements in that world are completely limited. You don't get to fill, you know, a spaceship up with, uh, a thousand potatoes and have them all, like, all the physics do everything for you. Um, they also have a, uh... A partnership with NVIDIA to get all the really good effects and everything that's kind of a showcase of NVIDIA uh, card features so it's the game is 100% the best looking game of all time um, saying Starfield is not as good as cyberpunk because it doesn't look as good as cyberpunk um, is saying well Starfield's not as good because it doesn't look like the best looking game of all time right um, yeah, it's like you can't pick up and play with everything in uh, in Cyberpunk. Everything's just, you know, there's there might be a pile of trash on the ground that if you step on it, it kind of like explodes a little bit in a really crappy way. Uh, Starfield, the creation engine, you can pick up everything, you can move it around. The physics uh, are a huge, huge bottleneck in, in sort of like the performance and things um, in a BGS game. Um, they're doing two completely very different things. They're both open world action RPG games, right? But they're technically extremely different. Um, story wise, extremely different. Engine wise, uh, extremely different. Um, that's kind of why I don't like the people saying, okay, look how good Cyberpunk is compared to Starfield. It's, I could take awesome things from Starfield and say, look how awesome Starfield is compared to Cyberpunk, which, and then show off only the limitations of Cyberpunk, and show off all the awesome stuff of Starfield, and then all of a sudden, uh, Cyberpunk's gonna look like a, like a chump, right? <laughs> um, but no, I get you. It, it seems like if, CD Projekt Red can do certain things better than Starfield can. Also, Cyberpunk has been out for a couple years now. Starfield is brand new. Um, CD Projekt has had a lot of time to refine and fix their game. At launch, that game was a nightmare. It was, uh, it was a trash fire, for sure. A lot of people still loved it. A lot of people hated on it. Um, but yeah, I would say give BGS another couple years, see where, uh, see where Starfield is, and then it would be more of a fair comparison. Um, yes, Cyberpunk is the more polished experience. It is the better game on many technical levels. There's a lot, a lot of things that Starfield does that, that Cyberpunk does not in terms of open-ended story, um, replayability, uh, the dynamic objects in the world, um, making it feel a little more real. All things that I've mentioned. But yes, it is it is a fixed, polished game now. It is also a very, very different game than than what than how it launched. Uh, it's almost a completely a complete remaster of itself. It is in no way the same game as it was when it launched. Really? You're gonna fight my horse? <laughs> Zarek, who showed that Starfield was basically a $5 Steam game ripoff? Uh, I don't know. I feel like I can debunk that. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to look at his video. But that smacks of something that's easily debunkable. Unless there's something else to compare it to. Uh, okay, that that's fair. I mean, when you're trying to look at the quality of something, you can't help but compare it to other stuff. I get it. I mean, to me, a lot of people complaining about how they got bored with the game after they put 200 hours into it. <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like you kind of got your money's worth out of it at that point. I think things like Skyrim with its modding community and everything has really spoiled a lot of us and, and Fallout 
um, to the same degree. I challenge you, I defy you, and I challenge you to put 200 hours into Cyberpunk and not get bored of that game. There's a lot less content in Cyberpunk than there is in Starfield. Oh god. I am just cursed to fight Ice Rays over and over. Feel ya, I'm sorry. I should have just hopped on the horse and rode her out of here. South. I need to go south. Okay. Everyone said the 2.0 update fixed a lot of things, to be fair. Shouldn't take years to fix stuff. Bethesda will never get that memo, though, sadly. Uh, well, CD is... Uh, Cyberpunk didn't either. They didn't really fix anything until very, very recently. They fixed bugs and stuff, but... As far as, like, gameplay balance and... Um just the the feel of combat and everything they didn't fix until very recently starfield was also a great intro to that universe for bgs to build on i think so too yeah i wouldn't mind seeing a starfield too of course you know i i don't think todd is still going to be around for a starfield too sadly i'm kind of doubtful whether or not he'll be around for a fallout 5 I think uh, Elder Scrolls 6 might be his, his last hurrah. Jeez, okay, this is a really eventful trip back to Winterhold. No. Okay, let's recover some stamina. Let the Undying Ghost take care of it for a little bit. You can never truly stop me. Such an abrupt end to our game. Okay, now we have a, an assassin loaded up in our ritual stone here. That's good. I honestly hope modding for Starfield doesn't take off as a middle finger to Bethesda to fix their own stuff, make it better. Yeah, so um, they've already supported it more than any other release. <laughs> I, I don't really want to come off as a, as a BGS apologist here, um, but I really did not like the, the trajectory they were headed in for Fallout 76 and kind of like a focus on uh, live service gaming and stuff. Um, so I was very happy to see them go back to at least a Fallout 4 and maybe a little better with their game. Um, so I don't know, I'm still, uh, you know, I'm 200 hours into the game. I'm still, you know, kind of in bliss about it. I just love having a new BGS game. Um, I don't know, I'm just, I think I'm resistant to video game hate. <laughs> I just like video games and I like good games. And I'm happy when I get to play them. Should have just skedaddled. I should have, honestly, yeah. Um, yeah, no, Bethesda's already supporting it. They have a, uh, I think in this next coming week, they have um, a DLSS and a bunch of other fixes coming to the Steam uh, beta branch right now, which you can opt into. I'm, gonna go, I'm just going to wait for it to become... Um, a mainline release because I, I don't know uh, Starfield right now works fine for me uh, it's just like I said I don't the new game plus grind is not very compelling for footage I, I still have fun playing it um, but just just for streams until I get back to that new game plus 10 and can settle back into a, a permanent universe then uh, 
I, I gotta I gotta go back to Skyrim because I can I can keep that changed up. Um, now that being said, you don't have to do a new game plus ten. You can you can sit and stay in that world forever, but yeah, you do miss out on some stuff doing it that way. Um, I would say that's a fair point. Um, the time investment into Cyberpunk 2077. I've been watching people play both Starfield and Cyberpunk, found that it was more interested in the Cyberpunk story. Yes, but it is the same story every single time. You might get some different dialogue options here and there, but it definitely isn't open-ended. It keeps you on rails. Um, you can choose which side quests to do here and there, jobs, gigs, all that stuff. But um, it's, it's always the same stuff. Was that Rhea? And Vilkus, awesome. Um, but it's always the same exact story for every single side quest. There's there's nothing that branches or anything like that. There are different endings that you can get, but as long as you save your game before like the uh, point of no return that you get, you can kind of go back and see all of them based on decisions you make, except for one. And that one, you kind of have to make dialogue decisions with Johnny uh, throughout the game, but more more late game stuff. But yeah, no, this uh, Cyberpunk is more like Fallout 3 where it's like, or even uh, Fallout New Vegas where you get to the end and it's like, okay, you're going to enter a point of no return. Make sure you save your game because once you do this, the game is over and you don't get to play anymore. Um, and it's something that BGS has fixed and learned their lessons from that like, oh no, people want to keep playing this game. Uh, and Cyberpunk has no new game plus. Once you're done with that character, you're done with the character. You can save it at like the end game and then you can go and do all your other gigs and everything, but there's no way to replay anything in Cyberpunk with the same character. Um, so basically, you know, you get a 70 hour playthrough and that's it. Uh, Starfield, I've been playing on the same guy for uh, 170 hours, almost 200 hours now. And uh, there's still new stuff. Uh, there's still, no, st still new stuff to do. Um, so that's that's one major difference. One point for Starfield is the end game stuff. There is no end game stuff for for Cyberpunk. It's a story, and you're done. Todd Howard not being in the gaming space. That's uh, he's got Elder Scrolls Six and Fallout Five, and then he said, according to him, yeah, I think it was up in the air because uh, he said if you start doing the math on Elder Scrolls Six five years from now, and then Fallout Five, you start to wonder, you know. Yeah, so I think he did mention Fallout 5 as something that he was going to do. Definitely something that they were doing next, but I don't think it's 100% that he's going to be around for the end of Fallout 5. Maybe. We'll see. Definitely for Elder Scrolls 6. That, that is his baby, 100%. That is their flagship title. They're going to put more into Elder Scrolls than they are going to put into any other game franchise. So there is some hope for that, I suppose. Um, okay. More Ice Wraiths, look at that. So not only do I have to kill one Ice Wraith. Yeah, fine, that's fine. Um, oh my good God. <laughs> fine, whatever. So not only do I have to kill one Ice Wraith. I had to escape three other Ice Wraiths and now kill two others. Right here. That guy's not going to last long against these ice raids. Gonna let him try. He's taking a good chunk out of him, though. Yeah, buddy. Look at you. Mercenary wizard for the win. Hey, what's up, GG? I'm doing great. I hope you're doing well, too. Cyberpunk is surely an awesome game, but the people making it, I'm not sure if they entirely understood. Look at how many missions you have where you're helping the cops. Yeah, well, that's like the like main bulk of what you're doing to like level up your character, right? Um, for me, the main gripe with Cyberpunk 2077 before they came out with um, uh. 2.0 is like the main thing I wanted them to fix was the end game content, right? Because I wanted to be able to do build craft in that game. 
Um, and as it stands, they still have not offered that. I was hoping for like a new game plus um, or just a way to keep playing after the after the main mission was over. Something to extend the life of a main character so that you could go through, you could level up more, you could take more skills. Um, because the gameplay in that game is fantastic, right? The combat is awesome. It's it's extremely refined. It, it holds up to a lot of first, uh, like, FPS uh, games that, that are, like, designed as being primarily an FPS experience and not a role-play game. Um... It's, it's like an immersive sim. It holds up to immersive sims, uh, for sure. Just in terms of gameplay. Uh, an immersive gameplay, for sure. Um, but there's no way to keep leveling your character once once the game is over. And that's, that's really kind of sad. Uh, and that's something that they did not address in any of the updates. And now that that's like the last expansion, we ain't getting it unless they surprise people. So that made me sad. But... Uh, the new refined game experience with the new perks um, and like the boss fights and everything are highly tuned to be like epic experiences. Uh, totally hats off to them. But yeah, it's like the vast majority of the content in that game, <laughs> you are helping the police. The side gigs and everything, the vast majority of them are NCPD uh, scanner hustles, right? Where it's like the police department are putting out like just a general call for help and then you go kill some gangsters wow i am running out of space here okay let's um just throw a hidden cache down here that'll that'll last for as long as we need it not permanent but it will last let's see i need a cache marker i'm sure i made a few of these yeah this it's nice for you to tell, for it to tell you how to actually use it. A lot of stuff on Hunter Board does not tell you <laughs> how to use it. Sort of hail. I might be able to disenchant some of this stuff too. I do have enchanting supplies that I came up with off stream. Todd's going to retire at some point? Yeah, eventually. Oh, I don't have Conjuration yet. That's cool. Carrying capacity, definitely. Hide Boots of Luck is uh, something that we're wearing right now. Destruction is not something I'm going to be using, so I'm just going to save that and sell it for, for more money. Yeah, yeah, there's no happy endings in Cyberpunk. Maybe the one where you just die with Pan Am out in the Badlands. Uh, maybe that's the best one. That's the happy ending. He did mention Elder Scrolls 6, and he mentioned Fallout 5. I don't think he mentioned... Well, I watched that entire interview. Uh, he left it up in the air. He didn't say definitively he was going to retire after Fallout 5. Um, he said, you know, you're looking. we're looking at Elder Scrolls 6 in, you know, four, five, six years. Fallout 5, uh, four, five, six years after that, and then you start looking about, like, you know, you start doing the time. It's like, am I going to be around after that? Um... That's, that's pretty much how he phrased it. Um, so he's like, he didn't say he was going to retire after Fallout 5, but he did he did mention that retirement was going to be a thing, um, probably around the Fallout 5 time frame. I don't blame him. But the games, the BGS games, are going to be very different after that. I think a lot of people discount um, Todd's Good to see impact on these games, fun. right? He, I think a lot You'll of people see him as the mouthpiece of the company that goes up there and tells us sweet lies. Uh, during the showcases, right? Um, and then the game comes out and there's like a bunch of stuff that he said that didn't really pan out. Uh, Starfield, I think, it was it was a difference. They, Microsoft gave him another year to, to polish this game up. He wanted to release it, but uh, the game worked really well. Uh, and I think it hit all the all the things that he said it was going to do. Um, all right. 
please stay close to me while but yeah like fallout 76 in particular people still have the bad taste in their mouth from that or like <laughs> 16 times the detail and the whole it just works thing uh people memed, memed on them like hard for that stuff but um let's see is this any better than the shield that i have painted hide shield armor 25 armor 26 yeah buddy i'll keep that um, but there was another interview with one of the senior um, designers for BGS that worked a lot on Starfield, but kind of like retired um, halfway through that once his once his job was done there. Um, and he said that every single decision made about these games goes through Todd, and that when he retires, these games are probably going to be very very different. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see. I think what those games look like. After Todd, AT. <laughs> it's kind of sad that Elder Scrolls Six is going to be that far from Elder Scrolls Five. Yeah, it is. It is. But I don't blame them for trying something new, right? It's like, in order to um, keep the creative juices flowing, if you're working on a product that your heart's not into. Um, it's going to suffer for it. And at the same time, the product that you do want to work on is going to thrive for it. I feel like if they were forced to do Starfield, it was going to be a lot worse. If they were forced to do Elder Scrolls Six, they wouldn't have done it justice. Now that they kind of have that long break between Elder Scrolls Five and Elder Scrolls Six, they're kind of looking to get back to Elder Scrolls Six now. Um, the, the product's just going to be better for it. We have to wait a lot longer for it, but I'm okay with that. I got a lot of other games to play. <laughs> My backlog is huge. Well, should you keep leveling your character? Ultimately, Cyberpunk is a setting where you don't win. You either die, leave, or go corporate. Um, yeah, no, I get it. Um, I just, every single playthrough that I did in Cyberpunk, I did not... I did not hit the level cap by the time the game was over. Uh, I wanted to hit the level cap. I wanted to, to um, experience new things with the with the same character. And I know, I know, I get it. Um, it does have a, a, a strong stop to the story of where that's supposed to go, um, which is why I was kind of hoping for like a new game plus or whatever. Uh, having V start out as like a just you know that that same level with all those perks and everything. Um, it might have been, it might have taken a little more. Did I just put everything back into the frozen corpse? I did. That's fine. Whatever. Um, it might have been a balancing challenge, uh, to get, make sure that you can do things that you're supposed to be able to do at lower levels at the beginning of that game and not be able to do things that you're not supposed to do. As some of you may know. In order not to break the game at those early levels, but I, it's completely possible, right? I can't think of anything in there that would have broken early level game with a high level character. I mean, you can come out of the intro and just grind uh, scanner gigs over and over again, and you can get to a pretty high level before you do any of the main story stuff, and it hasn't broken anything for me. I found that I'm more interested in glacially placed games than mainly mini movies. Uh, glacially paced games, yeah. Um, sure, I get you. It's sad that uh, I think generally with these long RPGs, it's like the general gaming gaming audience wants to kind of rush through objectives well, and check those boxes that pop up for you on your objectives list, list right? BGS games, CD Projekt Red games, all these big open world RPGs, they're much better enjoyed at a snail's pace. Going slow, absorbing your environment, really getting into your character's head. Um, so I think like a lot of the people that are complaining about getting bored of Starfield um, after like 40, 50 hours, or they're probably just mainlining the main quest and everything. There's, it, It's hard to get bored in that game if you're taking your time. Same complaint people have about Diablo 4. I mean, a lot of the uh, 
the mainline content creators and stuff were really shitting on that game for not having an end game and they're like yeah after 600 hours of playing this game there's nothing left to do and they're like what <laughs> what else do you want how much more content do you want 600 hours in like you know two months is like... nobody else is playing the game like that like relax it's not a race except in diablo's case it literally was a race which they probably shot themselves in the foot with please be careful here the site isn't entirely secure CC stuff was all mod authors making? Okay, uh, they haven't worked on a product for ES5 or anything in that universe since Dragonborn came out. Uh, true. Um, AE came out. Um, yeah, the CC stuff... The content part of it, yeah, that was all mod authors that they contracted for. Don't touch anything. Um, they did have to spend their own QA resources, making sure that all of what? it worked and everything. And then for the oh, AE yes. release, they did you. tweak some things for it. I remember um, there were some bug fixes. There was a help. new scripting engine, That's fine. Just, um, just which supposedly helps nip a lot of, of bugs, script-based bugs uh, in the bud. You can look around in the chamber. Um, just Scrim's not firing in Skyrim and any BGS game is the number one cause of of the vast majority of, of all the bugs that you Just get in the game. The so the overhauling that was so was a, was a big thing, um, and that's something that they did release alongside the AE content that the mod authors did not help work on. That was that was BGS, um, but that wasn't huge. That they, they had a smaller team doing the testing and the uh, the tweaks to the old engine that way, while everybody else was working on the Starfield engine. 2012 2013 probably 2012 i don't think they would they would keep releasing stuff two years after fallout 4 was a little different they were releasing a lot of stuff but like a lot of smaller stuff for that too i'd rather wait for a great es6 game than get it early and be it hot garbage yeah and i hope uh starfield is uh -huh. is a good um indication of, of how that's going to be handled um microsoft came in and said you know what take another year let's get this right um, and I hope Uncle Phil does the same thing with the Elder Scrolls. Uh, it's slowing Todd down, saying, okay, no, take another year, get it right. And Todd's like, no, I want to release it. Let's get it out now. The bugs are fine. Nobody cares about the bugs. Capri X, welcome, welcome. Yeah, a decade, yeah, I mean, okay, say what you will about like Assassin's Creed games and stuff, there's a lot of filler and stuff in it, but they do come out with a new game like every couple years and it's always a new story. They always have new features added to the engine. Um, you know, <laughs> the releases sometimes are hot garbage and they have to fix them later. Um, but, I'm stuck here. What in the world was that racket? Um, but you get a new game every couple of years, right? And they do eventually fix How it. How in the world did that happen? Uh, and it's the same thing with a lot of other franchises like that. Really? Um, the the happy medium is somehow. is somewhere in between. Is there somewhere you can use it? I mean, if you look at the 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 best open world uh, games, it's like you get Assassin's Creed is in that list, right? Um, Ragnarok, or is it Ragnarok? Or was it Valhalla? Ragnarok was the God of War game. <laughs> Valhalla is, uh, it's, it's a great AAA game, right? Uh, it had some bugs on release, but it wasn't too bad. There's a lot of filler, it's kind of empty, but um, overall it's a great game. Uh, the one before that, uh, Odyssey, was fantastic, full of content, lots of stuff to do, uh, new stuff added to the engine. Not really about assassins anymore, but it, you know, it was a great role-playing game. Um, but then every other example, uh, like CD Projekt Red, um, there was a huge amount of time between The Witcher 3 and Cyberpunk 2077. There's going to be an even huger amount of time between The Witcher 3 and The Witcher 4. Um, these games take an enormous amount of time to make. It's not the old days where you, you like, um, Some kind. where you were on these weaker systems that, and in a market where you weren't forced to have these cutting-edge graphics to compete with another game 
um, you weren't spending you know hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars maybe you know upwards of a billion dollars on the development of a game to make sure you get it right uh, you know uh, development times were a lot smaller scopes of the games were a lot smaller there it wasn't so risky uh, you could put something out um, and you know there wasn't as much competition like Oblivion had no competition there was no competition for Oblivion except um, yeah, no, there. That's full stop. There was no. There was no competition for Oblivion that I can think of. There was no other game like it. Skyrim came out and it had like uh, Dark Souls, or Demon Souls, I think, uh, at that point, uh, which was a very different game. It was kind of an open world-ish RPG, but there was nothing else. Uh, it was competing with Fallout 3, but it wasn't fantasy, right? Um, now, Resonance. all these you game companies the have to put out Must like this just barn burner of a game. I wonder, um, and it's extremely sense? expensive. It takes forever. I, I honestly don't know how the Assassin's Creed <laughs> series has been doing it like that. Um, they're more iterative releases for sure than, than something like Fallout or... Elder Scrolls or The Witcher 3 or anything, but it's the same pattern everywhere. This may be a hot take, but I think they need to let the Assassin's Creed die or completely reboot it. I don't know. I really liked Odyssey. I liked Odyssey a lot. Um, Valhalla I haven't played yet, uh, but it seems like it's more of Odyssey, right? Well, let me get through this here. We're already, what, 12 years? You figure another few years, and yeah, over 15 years. Uh, I'll take Starfield, though. It's decent for what it is, and modders will make it better, for sure. Well, yeah, that's that's all I wanted. I wanted to return to Fallout 4. Um, I really hope they, you know, maybe try to headhunt somebody from the Diablo team, or maybe an Ion himself, uh, to, to rework how they're doing their, Why in the world their perks, right? Up? What is this place? Starfield perks and skills are, aside from a few, are very uninspired, and it was kind of the same way for Fallout 4. Uh, Fallout 4, I thought, was a little better than Starfield. Something Starfield does a little better in terms of, like, its skills and its perks and its its character building. Um, the gameplay, the shooting me mechanics, uh, I think they improved the, the movement and traversal quite a bit. I just, I need more creative perks, and that's something that modders have been fixing for years, but... A nice ion uh, modeled um, and how you coordinator off of Diablo. Enemy. So if we, we could get this somebody from the Diablo team into BGS, headhunt them, get them to rework the uh, the perks on the vanilla game, I'd, I'd be a happy camper. Other than that, disaster. you know, the great care, for Starfield, the loading screens the are a thing, but I don't see how they can get around that. I don't, I don't mind it too much. Um, the grab jumping is a loading screen. I, Entering the atmosphere is something, something that... If, if I had to physically what fly from space through the atmosphere to the surface of a planet every single time, I would get sick of it. Uh, I would be fast traveling in a heartbeat. <laughs> it's not I a complaint for me. Some of the... like, There are a lot of loading screens in like New Atlantis and things like that, and that was all performance Secret stuff. Order? That can be fixed technically, sure um, which I hope that they hard. do. And danger ahead? Why, that doesn't make any sense at all. The but without the grab jumping no and interplanetary um, travel, you're going to get a lot less load screens. It'll Perhaps be more like Fallout 4 inside these Skyrim. Coffins. Now, please do be careful. Who knows what we're going to find? But I'm not playing Starfield like I do with Skyrim or even Oblivion. Yeah, I don't think it's meant to be played like that. It, it's it's more focused on New Game Plus, and if you're just trying to focus on a character in a playthrough and then start over and do another one, you're you're probably going to be a little, a little disappointed with Starfield that way. It, it's more of a long-term, one playthrough kind of game. Uh, I think. Let's take care of this guy first. Down 
Okay, sorry. <laughs> Was not paying attention to the game. Kind of enthralled by the conversation here. Good combo, by the way. I like this. You know, you don't have to gr agree on everything, but, you know, we can keep a civil conversation and not get too worked up about it. We're all better off for it. <laughs> um, no, I don't think they need to let Assassin's Creed die. I think they need to refine their formula a little bit, right? Um... It got a little too bloated. They tried to condense it a little bit with Assassin's Creed Mirage, but it turns out that's not what anybody wanted either. Maybe a reboot, uh, rethink their formula a little bit. There are a lot of people. Uh, it's a huge seller for them already, and a lot of people came on board during the uh, Assassin's Creed uh, Origins and uh, Odyssey type of stuff. They want that big, huge role-playing game experience where they can play it for hundreds and hundreds of hours and still have stuff to do. Um... I don't know. We'll see. Uh, maybe they need to branch off. They need to do the smaller scale games and they need to keep going with the bigger scale games and make things more meaningful, right? Less grindy. I'm more biased towards software developers. I was always asking for more time to polish my code. However, I was always cognizant of the fact the company had to keep the customers happy and they always have to have something to sell. There's a business side of that um, where it's like you have to release something at some point. You just have to. Otherwise, <laughs> you're going to run out of money. Uh, they don't ever want to talk about it that way, but that is definitely the case. If they aren't releasing something that customers can buy in whatever form it might be in, they're not going to have money to pay their developers. It's just an unfortunate reality, I think, and the, it's going to be this way for a while. They're going to release stuff too soon. They're going to fix it, and eventually it'll be great. Uh, maybe early access is the key. You know, be more upfront about what, the state that the game is in before it releases, and like, they're like, okay, uh, we're still working on this game, but if you want to get it early, uh, give us the money now. You're going to exactly what BG3 did, uh, Baldur's Gate. Um, that game's kind of a mess too, but at least the first two thirds of the game was solid, right? <laughs> they hadn't polished the third act yet. Uh, there are a lot of performance things there, but that game was in development forever, and that soft release and early access was huge for them. Huge. And that's something that a lot of games aren't doing that they probably should be taking more advantage of. Um, I know Todd is stuck in his marketing cycle of, you know, um, releasing four to six months after um, after the announcement date, right? Uh, that keeps, like, the maximum levels of hype and everything. But can you think of how huge, like, early, re early access of Bethesda would be? There would be people all over that, right? And knowing what you're getting into, it kind of just, like, pulls out the rug of the complaints right out from underneath them right it's like okay we're fixing that uh thank you for letting us know that'll be fixed for uh the main release this is early access but you know can't complain about how broken the game is when it's early access right <laughs> he likely makes more money than what they'd be willing to pay him uh actually like the loading screens the grab jumping and sky uh, star field it's relaxing yeah i don't mind it at all that's one of the major complaints about that game though I like doing the planetary surveys. And, yeah, it's very chill, right? There's, for the, like the more like flow, like zen gamers, that the exploring stuff is great. I, I still enjoy doing it too. I like that it's there. Even when I was streaming it, I joined the surveys of planets, flora, fauna. Yep, it does get repetitive at some point, but repetitive isn't always bad if you enjoy what you're repeating. That's what a gameplay loop is. <laughs> The problem with Mirage is even if you go back to the basics or reboot, you still have the same team that you used to have. It's like uh, what DC Comics did. Uh, DC a while back decided that the comics were too bloated, there was too much continuity, and the stories were insane. Uh, uh, so they made the new 52 to clean the slate. The problem with that is that they had all the same writers that they used to have, so they were making all the same mistakes with these new comics. Uh, the readers were still unhappy. Yeah, maybe they need to do like a sub team, um, take some of the veterans from some of the older games that were more the more condensed uh, content, uh, kind of like a smaller, more replayable game. They need to form a new team. Just do, just fork the efforts. You know, they have a smaller Assassin's Creed and they have a bigger Assassin's Creed, and everybody's happy, right? But the smaller games are 
less money to make you can re you release them more often and then the bigger games will be better for them because you're not just trying to fill it with meaningless bloat you actually have like meaningful side stories and compelling content in it so with ubisoft even if they reboot ac it'll still be ubisoft at the helm. okay that's fair yeah oh no that's fine i, I love this conversation it's awesome if they're complaining about the loading screen and grab jumping, they need to go outside and touch some grass a few times a week. Probably, yeah. Um, and the, I think the uh, the fast um, drives are a, a hard requirement for that game. If like you're trying to run on a traditional um, plate hard drive, you're no, that that's that's bad. Can't do that. So if you're running on a fast hard drive, the loading screens aren't really a big deal anyway. You're just going to see a loading screen for a few seconds. Or a second. Yeah, and uh, the more pictures you take in photo mode, those actually show up in your loading screens. And I've actually also seen them show up on my uh, Windows uh, lock screen, too. <laughs> um, yeah, seeing some awesome uh, landscape pictures of certain planets and stuff show up when I lock my computer almost as like a background uh, has been awesome and then just seeing I like four different pictures Why I took of Sarah's butt just show up on my computer screen like when I get up in the morning has been uh, kind of funny too I do find that I'm getting my uh, button mapping mixed up between Skyrim and uh, Starfield, though. They're two very different games, right? But they're similar enough. They have that Bethesda stank on them. So when I'm in uh, Skyrim and holding the controller, sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm actually playing Starfield. Uh, or at least my muscle memory, that's where it goes. And then so I start hitting like the wrong button to, to sprint and duck and stuff. Visioning loading screens of Sarah's butt. Yeah, no, I would put like, um, because there are like the overlays you can do in photo mode too about like documenting certain planets and everything. So I like did like a, you know, like there's like a classification of like certain planets and there's just Sarah's butt like right in the middle. <laughs> that happened to you too coming back to Skyrim? Yeah, no, it still feels like a Bethesda game, right? It happens to me too. If I'm if I'm doing like a Fallout 4 playthrough and I go back to Skyrim, I start like trying to enter vats and stuff all the time, especially the sprint button. Yes, exactly. That's what I tried to do just there, and I ended up crouching uh, when I was trying to sprint. So this button is a uh, sprint. That's pushing in on the stick uh, in Starfield. So if you see me just randomly start ducking, that's that's me trying to sprint. The sprint button in Skyrim is the scanner button in uh, Starfield. <laughs> oh, it's the same way on PC too? That's awesome. I have a tool for this, a bone amulet that lets me see in the dark. Like so. There's a dude. Gonna look right at me, huh? While well, I stab you in your crispy little face. Okay, let's see here. What do I have in terms of spells? Maybe like a fury spell that I can use to. Yeah, we'll do fury. Damn you, muscle memory. Are you a Tekken guy? Have you seen the... Victor looks sick, right? Like French John Wick and Tekken? Sign me up. 
Usually I'm not one for those like weapon uh, characters in Tekken. I am a Tekken guy, by the way. I love Tekken. Uh, super excited for Victor, though. I don't know. I feel like not everybody loves Victor, but I think the general sentiment of it was that, holy shit, this guy looks sick. Scanner on the PC is the F key. Okay. Right next to it. <laughs> I wish I had an excuse for hitting the wrong button. Sadly, I just need to get good. <laughs> well, when you play a lot of different games, if you're playing one game all the time, then yeah, you're, you're probably not going to hit the wrong buttons too many times. But if you're playing more than one game, you're probably going to hit the wrong buttons quite a bit. Like, regardless of the game, I still kind of... If I'm playing Diablo a lot one night and I go back to Skyrim, I start doing Diablo shit. Like, trying to hit the evade button um, for my dodge, and it's like a completely different button. Victor's already developing quite a few. Oh no. You see a thirst trap? That's one thing I've never really gotten are the video game thirst traps, right? Uh, I know. Okay. So a lot of us, you know, especially when you're deeply role playing, I can see how you might start falling in love with a character just a little bit, right? Or at least want some cuddle time or something. But like fighting games, that's 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 a little different. With the roleplay games, with like romance options and stuff, yeah, all right, that's kind of designed that way. I don't know. No judgments if that if that happens to you, right? I don't. I'm not gonna think less of you. But that's just not something that's ever happened to me <laughs> with fighting games, right? Ah! Really slow in um. In sneak mode. Getting some speed enchantments, some movement speed enchantments would be great at some point. Okay, this dude. Oh, jeez. No ritual stone. Ah, crap. Ooh, it's a white. That took a chunk. I was gonna work on my block skill, but not against a white. Favorite was Huarong in Tekken? Oh, you like the kicky ones, huh? Kick, 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 kick. <laughs> Kick your opponent to death. No, Huarong's fun, and he's still in the uh, he's still in the series too. He's a mainstay now. Good character. Lots of lots of mix-ups. Bobby Light. This place smells like Magus <laughs> and Maldareth not wearing pants. Well, you can count on that. Uh, I sometimes have a brief moments of falling for a character, but then I watch them try to walk past a couch or something. <laughs> right, it kind of uh, destroys the illusion right then and there, right? Nothing like watching uh, your... Uh, your crush trip over a couch, uh, Dick Van Dyke style. <clears throat> wow, that's a deep cut way back in the day. Uh, I don't know, that was a silent thing for some Tekken uh, caliber characters going back to the 90s. I know some of my male-female friends were hung up on the artwork even then. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, the the uh, the artwork itself is thirst-trappy as hell, right? <laughs> that's that's a very fair point. Um, yeah, it's almost like the, the promotional material... Um, and some of the divine... Uh, 
design stage stuff for those characters was uh, it was meant for a body pillow, right? <laughs> uh, Jin Kazama is cool, man. Um, he's one of the coolest, uh, you know, face of a franchise characters for a fighting game like ever. Uh, and I really liked his redesign to more traditional karate in uh, Tekken 4. The gameplay <clears throat> change there was awesome. He kind of split into the traditional karate stuff uh, for his like main character, and then they gave uh, Devil Jin to everybody who wanted the uh, Tekken 3 style of Jin back. Cool stuff. I love Tekken, man. One of my uh, mainstays growing up. For me, PlayStation 1 was like the golden era of gaming. It's like when I first started my first job and I started having my own money to buy games and stuff. Uh, before then, it was like I, I started with the NES, but my parents didn't have a lot of money. So every other weekend or so, we could go to the local like uh, video rental place and, and rent a game for the weekend. We weren't like allowed to play during the weekdays, which was kind of sad. <laughs> um, but we would rent a game for our NES um, and be able to play that for the weekend. Uh, it was kind of the same way for Genesis and then the SNES came out, but like once I got my own job and was able to afford my own games, that was that was when the PlayStation 1 was out and it was all Gran Turismo, uh, Tekken, um, didn't really get too into um, Tomb Raider, but it was still a really good game. What other games did I play for PlayStation 1? Oh, the fighting games. Uh, Street Fighter Alpha series was awesome. Um, Marvel vs. Capcom was more... They, they did have a, uh, a PlayStation port, but that was more Dreamcast. Dreamcast was like an arcade lover's like dream come, come true, especially for fighting games. But yeah, I grew up on Tekken. Uh, Tekken 1, Tekken 2, Tekken 3 was like the GOAT. And then Tekken Tag Tournament came out as like a, a launch title on PlayStation 2 and that was that was game over for me. <laughs> I, was, I was a lifelong fan at that point. <laughs> oh man, Bobby Light coming in here spitting fire. I like it. Sailor who's always dropping things like soap and mics. <laughs> uh, that was the best. Renting games for the weekend with your friends for dirt cheap. Yep. Tekken Tag was the best. That was awesome. Yes, sir. For that, for money. Oh, yeah. I have uh, I didn't really get into the tournament scene until Street Fighter 4 and Tekken Tag 2. Um, but I did. I entered some tournaments. I never won any money, but, you know, I I got fairly far in some of them. That shit goes really deep. That esports stuff. You got to make that shit like a full time if you want to compete in that stuff these days. You got to know frame data. You have to know character matchups. Uh, like every single thing that they do, you have to at least know the counter for. So that when you recognize it... Oh, wow, he didn't catch me. Okay. Let's see if we can reset detection here. Uh, and especially with Tekken, with, where move lists like go 100 plus moves deep, to know the counters for all those things and where to duck, where to low parry, when to block, and what to punish with, it's a lot. It's a lot to learn, but it's fun when you actually start, when you actually do get good at it. And you can start competing uh, with the, with your actual human opponent instead of with the game itself. That's where those games really shine. Good stuff. That one-on-one -on -one competition is like still one of my favorite things ever. I, uh, I was a pitcher in high school for baseball. Um, and that one-on-one -on -one competition, it's like, it's just me and it's you and I get to do that all game. I don't have to wait for other people to hit if I'm like, 
playing in the field or something. Um, that was like my favorite thing. I still miss it. I did actually get recruited by some colleges to come pitch for them, but I had a uh, academic scholarship for ASU here. And ASU had a pretty good engineering degree and I wanted to be a computer programmer, so... I took that instead of doing like a, a scholarship at a, at a junior college. To keep playing baseball, but there are adult leagues and stuff that I could look into now. It's just now just having the time or the uh, the body to be able to do that anymore is is becoming harder and harder. Even back in high school, I had problems with tendonitis with my throwing arm. I can't imagine how bad that would be now. Wow, okay. Draugr Deathlord didn't know what hit him. We do need to strengthen this uh, the sneak attack though, it, it seems kind of weak. Maybe I need to get a stronger weapon. Shouldn't have to sneak attack somebody 17 times to get the kill. It's not efficient. Although for a hybrid class, maybe it's okay. Maybe, uh, maybe this gameplay style is just like that. The sneak attack can be used to eliminate weaker enemies immediately uh, and then be used to kind of soften up a stronger enemy to where then it's like you uh, use your ritual minions or your conjured minions in order to to help out with a with a more drawn out toe-to-toe -to -toe battle Benefits of friends who worked at arcades. Oh, man. That would have been awesome. I would have been in heaven back then. But I won a ton of tag tournaments where I uh, live and in Philly. Awesome. Well, who was your team? Who did you play? I was a Brian Fury and Paul Phoenix guy, which isn't like the greatest team, but those were the characters that I knew how to play. And I really liked that Fisherman's Uppercut from uh, Brian Fury where he'd like do the uppercut into your gut and you would lean over his fist and he would turn around and just slam you into the ground. It was awesome. He didn't catch you because he's a zombie. He doesn't have any nerve endings. <laughs> the downside of being undead. Yeah, he doesn't feel pain, but then he like has no idea that he's being slaughtered. <laughs> you have to constantly uh, study each character's movesets and combos, yes? Yeah, I mean, even the, the, the characters that you play, the movesets and combos, that's the easy part, right? It's learning the combos. It's, it's learning the holes in the other person's offense and defense and, and how to exploit them that becomes the real the real issue having at least five tommy john surgeries is the dream <laughs> i know right no i never had to have surgery on it mine was just it, the tendonitis on it the inflammation would get so bad that um that, like i couldn't i couldn't move my arm it's like i would be taking infield practice it, just trying to throw from second base to, to first base it was i was basically rolling it after i would pitch even just like two or three innings in the heat of the moment, it's fine because you have the adrenaline and the focus and everything. It's, it's the day after and the day after that that was that was killing me. <clears throat> no surgeries though. That, that was nice. Paul and Lay. Lay was uh, insane in Tekken Tag One. Yeah, that that back step, that ha ha step. I don't know if you uh, if you ever got into that, but some of the Korean players um, who just would. Uh, go really ham on innovating new tactics for that game the haha -ha step uh, <laughs> I don't I don't know if you know about it but if you don't you should probably look up lay haha -ha step Tekken tag one and just see how insane the movement is with that character that people got to that was back when global fighting game tournaments were not really a thing and everybody was very localized but there was a lot of tech from all over the world that didn't really get shared until later when the internet became a big thing. I knew it was coming.
My friends were Vietnamese and we played together, so yeah, I had uh, all of them. I'm sorry, my... <laughs> oh, you had all of them down. Yeah, I think they're both doctors in different fields now. Awesome. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like the fighting game community. Um, extremely smart people. You have to, you have, to have a brain for like math. Um... And a brain for innovation and, and thinking of things in new ways to to be good at those games. So a lot of those people like that grew up during like the heyday of Street Fighter 2 um, and who are big time competitors, they have like really impressive jobs now, like network engineers, doctors. Some of them are like game designers now, creating new really cool stuff and they're all super smart people. Not to say anything bad about um, Roleplay RPG players. <laughs> you guys are all smart too. Um, gamers in general, I think, are, are impressive people. Multi talented, multifaceted. It's a group that uh, kind of gets slept on a lot, I think, in terms of just how brilliant people are. Okay, I don't want to do this in night vision. Is he gonna explode? Is he gonna explode? No explosion, okay. He's still glowing though, like he wants to. <laughs> All right, we have the amulet fragment. Here we go, forbidden legend. Galder's amulet will be great for this for this character for this build, I think. Get that going. Good time, so. Had them down with all the moves, yeah. They broke down stuff by frames to show combos with programs they wrote back then. That was impressive stuff. Awesome, so they did have like frame counters and stuff. Yeah, the frames are, are very important for those games. Uh, I, I got really into the... Uh, the frame counting and stuff with uh, Street Fighter this 4, Street Fighter 5, and, and Tekken... Tekken Tag 2 and Tekken 7. Take a look. Got to know what you can punish when. I have no idea. This is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Apparently, I can't English today. <laughs> YouTube's training to certain wrong characters on purpose. He needs to see this for yeah, that's fine. You can blame the technology. Can you I'll allow it. College and inform Salvo Saren of this discovery, please hurry. Let Savo know. Fine, fine. Uh, let's see, where are we at? 12.34 p.m. So we're about an hour and a half in. Um, I might take a quick break for a snack here, just so I'm good to go going forward. I'm fine now, but I just want to refresh my water and maybe grab a protein bar or something just to make sure I'm fine going forward. Um, I do have to make sure I am stopping on time today at uh, 2 o'clock. we got another hour and a half or so. Um doing a little bit of a late birthday celebration with some friends today uh doing a very highly rated and apparently very difficult escape room uh today <clears throat> and that starts uh I, I still have to have and we're having people over afterwards too so i need to be able to you know take a shower get my beard all trimmed up and my neck shaved and everything so i don't like a total hobo before i go out and then have everybody over Hey, there's Aster. Welcome, welcome. Got to the point where you weren't beating your opponent. Your opponent was making a mistake. At that point, you need to, to just be lucky. Yes, indeed. And that's, if you look at um, any one-on-one -on -one sport, that's basically how it is, right? Um, you're trying to take a... Po uh, like, when you get to expert level, you're trying to just take advantage of your opponent's mistake. But... You're also trying to bait your opponent into making that mistake, which is another layer on top of that. 
Uh, and it's the same way in tennis, it's the same way in fighting games, it's the same way in boxing, martial arts, fighting games, uh, anything really, where it's like a one-on-one -on -one thing. Uh, team sports are a little bit different. It's, it's harder to coordinate all that. Um, so it's less of, you know, a real-time play caller versus play caller thing like it is in one-on-one in -on -one sports. Or one-on-one -on -one competition in general. But yeah, one-on-one, -on -one, uh, my favorite kind of competition. Team sports are fun to watch. It, it's impressive in different ways, but it, if you're looking for pure competition, the one-on-one -on -one stuff is... is really where it's at. So the pitcher-batter combination in, in baseball is the core of that. Any kind of martial arts that you might want to watch, uh, that's core of that, too. Chess is kind of the same way, although chess is a little more restricted in things you do because all the movements and everything are so formalized it's it's a little bit different video games in particular uh one-on-one -on -one competitions are awesome and fun to watch and and easy to appreciate the skill once you kind of start trying to get into it yourself for a lot of people who aren't into fighting games seeing like a fighting game tournament you might see just a couple of people mashing on buttons and hoping to get lucky, but it's completely incorrect. <laughs> There's so much studying and skill and time, and it's they probably spend more time getting good at that fighting game than, than you do on your full-time job. Um, okay, what am I doing now? Uh, should we go back to... Okay, we're going to go back to the college. Uh, I think I want to get this... Oh, we need to go back to the college. We need to go back to Windhelm to, to pick up our assignment from Galmar, uh, see where we're going next. And we also need to start looking at this Forbidden Legend thing because that Galdor amulet is going to help us out a lot. Okay, that's what I'm doing. But first, I am going to do a quick save here and I'm going to take a quick break, get a snack, get some more water. Maybe do a little tinkle or a poo-poo. Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> All right, I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. Let's see. Man, I should have done a, a, a poll. Okay, let's do a poll right now. Uh, all right, let me get back there. Oops. Uh, participant community moderation, timestamps. Oh, engage with your audience. Start a Q&A, start a poll. Ask a question. Did Karn poop on his break? Show some Starfield to my sister today, and guess who forgot how to dock on another ship? Oh no! <laughs> There's so much to learn in that game, and they really don't do a good job of telling you how to play it. Um, Caladran is enjoying Starfield. Good, glad to hear it. Ninja Killer or Sonic Fox? Uh, yeah, those are uh, MK players right now, right? They're playing MK1. I was kind of disappointed by MK1. I did play it a lot. I do like the invasion mode. Um, I'm just kind of disappointed by the roster. I, I don't like what they did with Scorpion. Smoke is really cool. I had a lot of fun playing him. Um, and most of all, I'm just disappointed because of... Um, they're treating this like a reboot, and they kind of squandered the reboot, I think. What I want from a reboot is start completely over, do Mortal Kombat 1 from the very beginning, let's do the tournament, let's follow, you know, the smaller core roster, um, go into Shang Tsung's Island, uh, make it like Enter the Dragon. Um, could you imagine the very first Mortal Kombat with that first story and like Goro and everything in like new graphics, just being able to go deep into that story with... Uh, with with new visuals and in a story mode and everything that would have been awesome but instead they kind of made it more of a sequel than a reboot except they just called it mortal kombat 1 and removed any possibility of an actual reboot disappointed with the roster just wanted to... no actually i don't mind megan fox uh she did a terrible job voicing that character but whatever it was it was more just I didn't really find a character there that I really liked. Mortal Kombat 11, all kinds of cool characters in there. <clears throat> Mortal Kombat 10 had all kinds of cool characters. Mortal Kombat 1. They mixed things up in a way that was new and interesting, but not in the way that I wanted. They do some Street Fighter 2 as well, yeah. A, a lot of those fighting game players are known for like being good at very, very good at one game. Uh, but they all dabble in all of them. Space battles are tough in Starfield. Um, it's You really have to split your perks between um, boots on the ground perks and space battle perks. Otherwise, you know, you'll be strong throughout the entire game, but then as soon as you fight anybody in space, you're gonna get you're gonna get death looped. <laughs> that was a hard lesson I had to learn with Starfield. <laughs> this is a weirdo kind of question, Magus. This is how it is here, Bobby. Wow, and we're at 50-50 on this, huh? We are at 50-50 on this. Wow, I did not think that that was going to be 50-50. Uh, I did not poop. It takes me a little longer to poop than, than how long I was absent. Um, yeah, no, I didn't poop. I didn't pee, which tells me I need to drink more water. No poops. No poops this morning at all yet either, so I'm in for a doozy a little later, I think. Got to start prepping for that. <laughs> All right. Well, shit. <laughs> I see what you did there. Let's kick the algo in the nads. <laughs> All right. I mean, who doesn't want to, like, 
have some have the algorithm point you at some random ass small streamer only to tune in and then there's a there's a poll on whether or not he just pooped that is compelling content to me i don't know about you guys all right let's head back to uh the college i think i'm going the wrong way Oh, and there's all this crap here, too, um, that I left on the frozen corpse. Take the valuable stuff. We can sell a lot of this stuff for training. Keeping an eye on encumbrance here, so I don't get cucumbered. Already talked about my pooping habits. I don't, I don't want to get cucumbered here on stream too. That would be embarrassing. We'll come back for the rest of that. That's the best at our age. We can prep for that nice half hour to enjoy it. <laughs> I'm not quite at half hour yet, but... You know, I will enjoy a solid 10 minutes to really empty everything out and get the most satisfaction out of it as possible. Maybe sometimes 15 minutes if I'm in the middle of a good video. Cue up some feature films. There you go. <laughs> <clears throat> Or if I'm in the middle of my Wordle or something like that, and yeah, I'll finish up the Wordle before I get up. <laughs> it's, it's a nice way to get your alone time if you live with somebody else, you know? Oh, jeez. Another one of these guys. You know what, I'll take the Ice Wraith Essence, too. I need to be better about using my potions and my poisons. Is that a goat? No, that's a guy. It's a pilgrim. That was the best. Early morning before work, would do the business watching the latest Fudge Mubbick build concept. Nice! <laughs> Um, not trying to be punny here, but a lot of people like to crap on Fudge Muppet. Um, but you know, Fudge Muppet, they were putting out content, man. They were, they were the ones keeping me, uh, you know, happy and occupied at work while, you know, I was staring at computer code all day and basically like desperately needed something else to like keep my willpower up. And I would just like listen to them as like a podcast and listen to their build concepts and their their history conversations and everything. It's kind of shallow con it's like shallow content, right? But it's still Skyrim content at a time when there wasn't a whole lot of it. Especially when you're looking to fill an entire day with like background noise. It did its job. We were talking about uh, Bro Duel on Maldoroth's stream right before this, and I like, I don't know, there's a certain amount of nostalgia about a Bro Duel. Like, you, you still see Bro Duel videos pop up now and then, even today, even though it's like they might do like two or three a year. But that, hello and welcome to Bro Duel, that like gets me in the nostalgia bone like every single time. I don't know what it is about those videos in particular. But, yeah, I get the warm fuzzies every time I hear that introduction on a new Pro Duel video. Yeah, one thing that uh, Fudge Muppet does that a lot of um, build creators don't do is they, they focus a lot on the roleplay stuff, right? I think they know where their strengths are, and they, they know the lore really, really well. 
and they're able to tie that into their builds. Um, their their gameplay and synergies and stuff like that are, are really hit or miss. Um, but the, the roleplay and the backstory and stuff, they're always really good. Or at least interesting enough, you know? Hold your interest. Uh, I need to find Savos. What am I doing here? Yeah, I mean, that was, there were no other showcase videos. Now it's like there, you know, there are probably a hundred different channels that do, uh, that do mod showcases now. And there's a lot of over, they don't all showcase the same mods, but there is a lot of overlap about hidden gems, mods you've never seen. And then it's like, yeah, actually I saw it on seven different channels just last week. More from Skypothesis. Yeah, they've been kind of MIA for a while. I know they release their stuff as seasons. Um, and then they take a long break between those seasons. You are relatively new here. But I haven't seen know? anything from them in a long time. You, but we have not that's another one. It's like what they do in the vanilla stuff is is really... That's that's true, Magus. I mean, I feel like they've lost something. I feel like they... It's, it's a lot like... Um, Then allow me to like when there's a, a band that like hits the mainstream for the first time and their stuff is like new and creative and awesome and then like they start losing a little bit each time they release an album it's not because they're selling out it's because it's like they don't have that that cause purposeful harm um, to your fellow members of the college. They were probably working on that first Are album for like 10, 20 years before they hit it big, right? So they were putting everything they had into that first album. Um, and then now they're under a record contract where they have to start releasing like new albums at, at a certain like uh, at a certain clip. Um, and all of a sudden the creativity, the creative process on that starts to suffer because you don't have 10, 20 years to really sink into the making those songs the best possible ah, please don't tell me that and i feel like it's the same way with um incinerated well you see it right on now. like uh like series like um tv series and stuff like that like you see a very strong start and then a very weak ending like lost game of thrones it's it's kind of endemic in any kind of creative endeavor that there's money involved in So I guess, yeah, maybe they are selling out in a certain type of way. <laughs> Once money's involved, now you're beholden to do certain things, whether you want to or not. And video game industries. Like, you see, like, a brand new indie game that was freaking awesome. I um, it was revolutionary, I and then all of a sudden they get picked up by a big studio, and now they're beholden to Thank you release for things to my attention. at a certain time Talk in order to, to make them money. Looks after your little group, yes? And the creative Since process he's suffers for it. Occupied, and I will need to see this discovery for myself. I think perhaps you should. Yeah, I think punk bands actually subject. suffer from that a lot. And good work. Green Day was like the next time you find yourself a lot exploring harder, ruins, a lot more punk, and they became helpful. more and more mainstream. And I think it's just because it's easy. It makes their employers happy. <laughs> they need to make that money. But I'm not saying that's what happened to Skypothesis, but I, I think maybe they just lost the passion for it. They started off strong because they had a bunch of these build concepts that they'd been working on for 10, 20 years, you know? Uh, and there, it was amazing what they were doing with the vanilla game. Um, it's like these new, unique concepts that came out of nowhere from a game that's been out for like 10, 12 years at that point. And they were doing things that nobody thought of in a format that was like really uh, entertaining and compelling to watch. And now it's like, I feel like now they're, it's not, they're not doing it for money, but they are doing it for just like the pressure of, you know, keeping the channel alive and relevant. Um, let's see, I am, I, despite my best efforts, I ended up cucumbered anyway. Is there anything else that I can oh. that I can disenchant while I'm here? Enchantments, huh? Take the enchanting experience. Why not? Is 
It's like the first time I heard uh, Pearl Jam's 10. Nothing they made after it was close to being as great. A lot of it was really good, but not the same. Yep. Green Day also did a lot of drugs back then, too, so... <laughs> right. Used to get eviscerated for holding that position. Yeah, people will defend that that stuff. Stuff that they like, they will defend it to the death, and they will get mad at you if you have a differing opinion. Uh, music snobs are the worst. The hipsters. <laughs> There Ooh, you are. I've been there trying she is. to find you. I just You've wanted been trying to, to let find you know me, huh? that has been asking about you. I think he's I like the freckles. I'm a fan. I'm not sure. Just well mind what you tell him, all right? All right, baby. No, no. Well, I don't think so. Between the two of us, there are rumors about him that this advisor position he has is a sham. An excuse. I would prefer that there to be really nothing between the two of us. The family, How about that? Trying to feed them information. Whether it's true, I can't say. But it never hurts to be a little suspicious, does it? Don't think so. Uh, thanks for the warning. You're welcome. Too bad we're not a destruction mage, huh? What was I saying about not thirsting over video game characters earlier? Damn. Rare moment of insight. Can you... Can you possibly help Jezarko? <laughs> Amazing how tall the Altmer are. Nors are supposed to be the next tallest race and the game is like 0.1 difference, but in-game it really shows. It sure does. Yeah, especially if you're playing in first-person view, it's like it feels like the Altmer are towering over your Nord character. Okay, uh, I think I can store some stuff in here for now. Mm. Maybe I should have sold some stuff to Feralda. time is it 3 39 p.m they'll, they'll start making their way out of the arcanium now do you know what the end game gear for this character is going to be yet um well i had first uh thought about like here let me this is what i was thinking originally um with uh, sort of like the bear helm and some like slipshod and ramshackle furs and chainmail here and there. So this is kind of what I'm going for, I think, for endgame uh, look. I don't know if it's if it's going to get there. There might be something that I like better at some point. But I do want stuff to be kind of like, just like cobbled together, right? I don't want anything too refined looking. This guy's supposed to be like a loner uh, and a shaman. Somebody who prefers the, the wilderness to civilization. So a lot of his stuff is going to be like self-made, self-enchanted and everything. And that's that's going to be like stuff that he finds out in the wilderness. Maybe some light mail, but mostly just furs and leathers. Uh, it's going to look rough. And that's kind of the way that uh, I think he should look, right? But on the way there, I'm just going to be picking up the best looking gear that I can. The other thing I've been considering is maybe something like... Um, some hodgepodge between the Hercene armor and uh, the Old Gods armor. Old Gods in particular might have some enchantments on it that, that'll be useful for this guy. Um, but I just have to see how it looks. The Hercene um, armor is not usually that great. I don't like that there's no pants on it. <laughs> um, either for male or female characters. It just, it kind of looks just a little funny. It makes me chuckle. It doesn't really inspire, like, fear or, like, this guy's a, a badass warrior or shaman or assassin or anything. It's just, like, 
Oh, look at that guy's legs. <laughs> so, I don't know. I mean, I feel like it would work in a roleplay uh, perspective. Uh, who do we got? STR8 something S. S straight sick MX. Okay. Nice. Welcome aboard, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for the subscription. You know I appreciate them. There's a pants add-on for it. I'll have to look. If you could drop me a link for that, I would highly appreciate it because shit looks ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm I'm thinking of looking for uh, like relics and stuff like that. Because this guy, I'm not uh, investing any perks into the enchanting tree. Not to say that I won't self-enchant some things. And but that's just not part of the build. Angry um, no. So I might have you to lean on uh, found stuff like artifacts and, and relics and things like that that have powerful enchantments on them and use those instead of like self-crafted stuff. Um, so, I've, so I've been thinking about sets like that, like the old god's armor, the Hercene's armor and things like that. Can't believe there's not a mod for the Savior's Hide with pants yet. Yeah, right? Um, well, there is, I, I think. Magus just posted it. Zavbio has added pants in his Leather Armors mod, which covers Savior's Hide as well. Awesome, yes. That's one thing that I do need to add, is uh, Zavbio's remodels for um, the AE stuff, which probably will hit some of the, some of the unique stuff as well. I'll have to look into that. That's on my list of things to do for the next for the next profile iteration on my mods. Pants, no plug-in. This is like probably the one case where you're gonna be advocating for pants, right, Magus? Or do you like the pantsless savior side better? I have a few things laying around that weren't worth Because of the no the pants thing. You may look Sticking to your guns. This isn't really gonna help us with anything here. Fight. Well. Okay, there is a book in here somewhere about... Maybe it's upstairs. Yep, it's upstairs. Uh, for the Galder's Amulet stuff. Ooh, bound Pike, huh? Can take that without having to steal it. Hey, James. Welcome, welcome, buddy. How's it going? Hope you're doing well. I'm sticking with the pantsless version? Nice. Or is the pantsless version sticking to you? <laughs> because, you know, your sweaty legs are uncovered now. I haven't used this mod myself uh, to give it a proper is it good or shit opinion, to be honest. Okay. Uh, well, I'll have to look at it. I'll pull it up. Actually, maybe I'll pull it up now. Lost Legends. Here we go. This is the one I needed. Let's go take a look. Um, hoping Magus is not rickrolling me here. Boom. Oh, okay, so this is a standalone. This isn't one of Zavbio's ones. Okay. Now, obviously, this is going to look different in-game. Yeah, I don't know. It just makes it look like you have hairy legs, right? <laughs> it's just that your pubes are so overgrown that it covers up your bits. I don't know. It's not bad looking. I don't know. I, would, I think I would have preferred, like, a more leather look to it, though. It kind of makes you look like a satyr or something. And is that scarf part of it, or is that like an add-on piece? Because I don't like the scarf. If it's something that just literally added, like, fur pants to the model, 
I think that would have been better. Yeah. Yeah, you, you got to see it in game to make like a real judgment on it. The Zabio leather stuff. Let's let's look that up. Yeah, this is one that I really want because of the AE content. I like what Amidian, I'm already running Amidian born for a lot of the texture overhauls and I'm happy with that, but the AE stuff is is the stuff that I really need for my next for my next one. Yeah, see like these just plain old like fur pants, those would look better with the with the savior hide, I think, if they just added that. Yeah, this looks a lot better. And it would be, because right now there's a big quality difference between the vanilla uh, AE stuff and the Amidian born retextures on the vanilla stuff. There's a big quality difference and it makes me not want to use the AE stuff for a lot. Scaled backpacks, that's nice. Wow, these look a lot better. The backpacks do. I didn't even realize he was uh, adding the backpacks in here. And I think this comes with a faux mod that you can you can pick and choose what you want. Wow. <laughs> Those look a lot better. Oh, they got some Legacy of the Dragonborn stuff in here too. Looking for the um, Savior's Hide stuff. I don't see it. Maybe Zabio has a uh, a Uniques pack that he uses. Yeah, I don't see anything in here. But it sounds like something that Zabio would get a hold of at some point, doesn't it? chat back up here likely Zap's version is better just haven't used it uh, because aside from Requiem the Savior's Hide is kind of not good at all for late game yeah um, right uh, but yeah if, you, if you're not like perking into enchanting your options are kind of limited there. You you might be able to find something better from a merchant, but I'm running Zim's Immersive Artifacts. I'm not sure what the Savior's Hide gives you for that. But it's got to be better than vanilla. The vanilla enchantments on a lot of stuff is just trash. For, like, the unique artifacts and stuff. Doing an interesting week with flooding issues more than usual. A lot of rain after great fireworks. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds like a pain. Uh, awesome that you had some good fireworks, though. Are you doing fireworks for Guy Fox Day? That's coming up real soon, right? Is that tomorrow? Remember, remember the 5th of November? Like this version of the Leather Scout myself. Yeah, that does look better. They really scuffed it up a lot too. I like how it has gotten some wear on it. I don't know, I feel like general quality is better on Zavbios. But um, this one has some unique creative choices on it that I like. That's pretty cool, too. I think you've used this one in the past. I think I commented on one of the characters that you were using when AE came out that uh, that I like the retexture on it. It's, it's all coming back to me now.
Zapio's good, but you can tell there's definitely order to how they retexture things similar to normal work. Okay, yeah. All leather looks better when it's darker. It does. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, you did it today. Cool. Remember, remember, the 5th of November, the gunpowder conspiracy. A Midian born is still king. Shango won't be done for AE, um, but I don't play AE much. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just in my load order now. I, I like what it added. I like that it gives me another touch point to vanilla players uh, in terms of what is available to my builds. Um, ultimately, the stuff on the Nexus is... is better for the most part um but i still do like the ae content a lot of it anyway there's some good stuff in there there's finis maybe i can sell him some stuff if you require assistance with summoning techniques please let me know if you would please also contain your summons to the good conversations rounds. today you the guys are talkative i like it be agitated further by atronox roaming their town the summoning of undead is even less advisable outside the college. Take a look. Staff of Yurik, should we... I feel like for ranged damage options, this, this character is going to hurt a little bit. Basically all we have, we're going to have shouts, but we're not there yet. Um, we have the Avenging Wraith who can shoot stuff. Um, and then whatever kind of archers and stuff we happen to have in our, in our ritual stores, right? Um... So I think it might be nice to just have like a staff that can do some ranged damage. So maybe I'll keep the staff of Yurik there. I don't need the staff of Mage Light. All this other stuff can go. Finnis does not have a whole lot of money to give us though. Black Soul Gem I want to keep. We'll let him keep the three coins as a tip. Right. Okay, and that alleviated our encumbered status there too. Excellent. Day 250 of not smoking. That's awesome, man. Almost a full ass year. Twenty three hundred fifty that's a new rig. That's a decent new rig right there. Right? So you give up smoking, which is something that you didn't need in the first place. Something that probably mostly had a, well, it definitely had a net negative on your life, right? Uh, you probably get some instant relief and a nice little, uh, a nice little wash of relaxation. But, you know, would you rather have the cigarettes or like a badass new GPU, right? Yep, health benefits and what you save is a new PC, exactly. I mean, not to trivialize the effort or anything that went into it. I'm sure it's hard. But that's awesome, man. I'm proud of you. Some are saying the Sigic mo Oh, a bit of this and a bit of that. All right, let's sell her off the heaviest stuff that we have that we're not going to use. Crafting materials we're saving. The light painted body shield. We're definitely going to use that. I just want to replace my hotkeys with it. Hunting knife, Bosmer boots. It wasn't as hard since I wanted to quit. Thank you, by the way. Oh, yeah. No problem, man. Oh, no, I want to keep these. Mercenary gauntlets are a, a little better. Every little bit helps with this guy. Yeah, I mean, when you feel like you want to do it, it's a change that you want to make. You're fully behind it. You're not being told you have to. I feel like that helps a lot, right? You're doing it for yourself and not somebody else. That's when it's the most uh, effective.
some people in my family have uh, struggled with addiction and they have not had as good of a a time with it or have been as success successful because you know I think in their heart they just really didn't didn't feel like they wanted to they just felt like they had to because right, everybody then. was telling them so personal buy-in seems to be a huge huge part of that Now I honestly can't stand the smell. My brother still smokes and it reeks the house up, even him smoking outside in the coming. Yeah, people who don't smoke um, know instantly whether somebody uh, was smoking or has smoked any time in <laughs> probably the last 24 hours. I think when you're smoking, you just, you genuinely don't know like how strong that smell is because you're so used to it. Makes all the difference in the world, probably, when you when you stop. Um, let's see here. Speak with Mirabelle Evan, uh, Irvin. Uh, okay, so I want to get the rest of the stuff that I left on this frozen corpse over here. Before I forget about it, this is not permanent storage, so it's not going to stay here and wait for me forever. Hey, feel ya. Yeah, every once in a while, like my wife and I don't smoke, right? Um, and every once in a while we'll have people over that do. Uh, and we can smell the smoke in the house, even though they're not smoking in the house, just smoking outside and then coming back in. And we can smell the smoke in the house for, you know, a day or two afterwards. Uh, let's see here. Where are we going now? Let's... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just fast travel back to Ryx, and uh, we've got about 40 minutes left on the stream. Just want to do some administrative stuff, and then maybe we'll head to... Um, we'll head to Morthal so that we can at least get started on the on the next leg of the Galder journey. It lingers, which of course I didn't notice till after I quit, right? The smell of cigarettes has always bothered me, but I have uh, always loved the aroma of pipe tobacco. Weird. Yeah. Well, tobacco itself isn't isn't as offensive as like the the packaged up cigarettes with all the with all the gross stuff in it. Um, I still don't like the smell of of tobacco personally, but I can see why some people do. And cigars are kind of the same way. Some people just really like that stuff. Um, and it's not altogether. It's like I can see like. Uh, why some people would like it there are some kind of pleasant notes to it sometimes but um yeah I, the, another one that i i don't know how people are <laughs> they like is the uh marijuana stuff and i don't, I don't want to like you know shame anybody if, if you like that or whatever but like the smell of it i i just really can't stand it And I know it's it's a healthier alternative to to worse things, so I, I'm not judging you if you like to smoke that stuff. But damn, it stinks. <laughs> uh, have a look at the Kitty Tail new spell pack. Give new ideas for build. It's called Obscure Magic. Okay, we'll take a look at that in a second. Let me let me unload some stuff here. Packed bedroll. Is there anything else that I need to get rid of here? I think we're good. Um, uh, 230. Okay. Still got some more stuff to sell off. I think I have some alchemy ingredients to... Oh, I got a lot of it. Look at that. A lot of stuff that I carved off of the random animals that were attacking me at the... Let's see a ghost over there. used to smoke weed too, but it's my panic trigger. Ah, yeah, you just, you just never know. Can't be around that either at all. 
Yeah, that's weird. I do seem to remember that, yeah, you were you're getting triggered a lot more when she started smoking the, the weed. That's interesting how that, that affects people in different ways. My son is big into it, but when I visit, I like to move our conversations outside. <laughs> yes, indeed. Indeed. That's another thing that lingers. If you, if there's like, it could be just like an empty room in the house. It could be like a, a bare walled garage that has like nothing that would absorb any kind of smell at all. But if you, if somebody like, it's, if that's where somebody smokes their weed, you can tell. It's like immediately when you walk in, it's like, wow, somebody's been blazing in here. Even like days and days afterwards, that, that shit sticks. Okay, what do we have left here? I would like to hit up White Run, just do some, um, sell off some more stuff. Maybe hit up the Traveling Khajiit Caravan. Maybe they have some, oh, I have some money to spend too on, on training. Yeah, okay, so let's do this. Uh, we do have a level up. Ooh, there's a Traveling Alchemist. He might have some good ingredients to buy here. Oh, he's not wanting to sell, though. All right. It's everywhere here in San Francisco. Yeah, some of the bigger, more liberal cities that have legalized all that stuff, you, 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 the smell of it's everywhere. <laughs> uh, I have some good friends in Denver. Uh, and it's all over the place up there, too. Uh, my brother used to live in Seattle. That's another one. It'd be all over the place. <laughs> uh, the end king dropping lyrics here that I that I don't recognize, but I'm sure it's fitting, and I'm sure it's a song that is uh, universally known and beloved, but I just don't recognize it. Oh, Maldoroth knows it. For me, it's, it's, my brain tends to separate lyrics from songs. It's like I can hear the tune of a song and recognize it immediately within the first, like, couple notes. But trying to connect, like, written lyrics to a song is very hard for me. It needs to be connected to the music for me to recognize it. I have a much better ear for music than I do have a uh, an eye for lyrics. What time is it? 6.30 p.m. Okay, so it's right at around dusk, which is the darkest period of time for my game. No caravans here, sadly. So James, this uh, this new obscure magic mod, is there anything that's going to be relevant to the uh, shaman? I'm not going to add anything mid-game. I think at this point my, my mods are well set for this build, but I do like to consider like future things if I do another reincarnation of this guy at some point. How I would have done it better with different mods, you know, and add them in for a future playthrough. Um, do I have anything to sell off to Danica? What business do college mages have in a place like... Take a look. I do have some stuff to sell to her. Now, I have a muffle perk. I don't need the, the bone ring anymore for it. Okay, she can keep a three septum tip. Grace of Kinnereth be with you. Speaking of San Francisco, though, uh, a few years ago, I think this was before the pandemic hit, uh, my wife and I, oh, this was definitely before the pandemic because my wife got a, working as a capacity of, of like a travel agent in some ways, she got some free stays at some really nice properties. Um, and there was an uh, island off of the, uh, off of San Francisco 
that was kind of more like a resort type island and we got almost like a little studio suite out there it was really nice uh but just watching the fog come in in the morning and seeing like the golden gate bridge uh like covered up with the fog and everything that was a great trip i loved visiting uh, and we stayed some in downtown San Francisco, which people say are inundated with homeless people. But I, when I was there, it just it wasn't really a big deal. Maybe I was I was staying to the right parts of town, <laughs> but I guess there are like apps to track like human poops around in the city. <laughs> just little little uh, little piles of, of human poops throughout downtown San Francisco. Um, but I never saw any, luckily. Good to see you. A friend that we had that uh, also went on vacation in San Francisco not too long ago said he was uh, he was propositioned by someone in an alley to, to buy some drugs, but his buddy just took one look at him and said, no, not these guys. <laughs> he's, he's like a nerdy guy like me. It's like, no, not these guys. So you wish to master the arcane arts. But no, I really enjoyed my time in San Francisco. A lot of history, cool vibe. I'm a fan. It's been good I'll go back. <laughs> kind of the same vibe as the other cities I mentioned, like Denver, Seattle, things like that. I, I like spending time in those places. I wouldn't like to live there. I'm not a big city kind of guy. I'm more of a suburb kind of guy. I like to be close enough to the big city for the convenience factors, but I don't want to live around all those people all the time, you know? That happened during COVID and after 2021, mostly, I see. After they were looting and rioting and all that, ruined a cool city. Ah, uh, that's too bad. We did stay in Minneapolis uh, after, that was post-COVID. We went to go see a, a Twins game there. Uh, we stayed there with a bunch of friends. Um, not a ton of people just like milling about the city in downtown Minneapolis. Like, I guess there probably was before COVID. But there wasn't any like violence or rioting or, or anything like that. I, that was uh, that was after all that kind of kind of blew over. I think. My poor Frale, I think Thorans. Gods be praised. Uh, a lot of like the stores that we went into, just random Walgreens and stuff in in downtown Minneapolis, did have like more security though than they probably did have before the COVID stuff. Mm-hmm. The homeless are pretty much relegated to Tenderloin, uh, and the homelessness has been bad since I moved here. And yeah, no, the the homelessness and the uh, human feces issue <laughs> in downtown San Francisco, that was something that we were warned about before we went there, but it ended up not really being much of an issue that, that we saw, at least the places that we went. We went to go see uh, a Giants game, and uh, we went over the bridge to see a... Uh, uh, an A's game too. Oakland's definitely a more scary place than than San Francisco, for sure, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, how are we doing on encumbrance here? Pretty good. Uh, let's get this painted shield moved over. Light painted shield. We're gonna go three on that bad boy. Move this out of our favorites. A little bit more surface area, a little more coverage. I like it. Uh, a little bit bulkier. Well, this guy's supposed to be very mobile, but whatever. We'll, we'll find a better shield at some point. This is just a temporary thing. I do like the, the paintings on it, though. The bear claw. Looks pretty cool. Very fitting, too, for a storm cloak. This looks like a storm cloak ass storm cloak shield, doesn't it? Yeah, the wind's kind of in the same same area. I don't know. All cities have their ups and downs. Uh, especially downtown areas are the same pretty much everywhere. I've been in a lot of different places, and downtowns are pretty much downtowns. Each each one of them has their like little their own little characteristics that set them apart, but. Yeah, downtown Philadelphia, downtown Seattle are <laughs> extremely similar. 
even though they're as like a place they couldn't be more different right with like a lot of the characteristics of the state they live in the city they're in part of the country they're in Need the people who live there but like downtown is just downtown wherever you go in in the big cities anyway the smaller cities like um my wife and i got married in uh jackson hole wyoming and the small town uh downtowns are, are much different from the big city downtowns but the small town downtowns are very similar to each other um like downtown flagstaff here in uh arizona is very similar to downtown jackson hole in wyoming Uh, all big cities are, Magus. I, I've been all over the country uh, in the last five years or so, and uh, because I like to go watch baseball games, right? I like to go see the the games at the stadium and check out the stadium and everything. Uh, so I've been to a lot of the, the the major cities, and they're they're all kind of the same. The, the homeless thing has gotten worse and worse over the years. Everywhere, it's not just Philly. Um, I think it's just uh, it, it's more of a economic socio-economic thing than than anything it's, it's it speaks to wider issues around the world really not just in that place not just in the country but all over the place people are trying to make do with less than they had before and some people just aren't able to aren't able to keep it going for whatever reason Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the street signs are the same, the street lights are the same, the buildings for the most part are the same. You get some unique architecture here and there, but for the most part, architecture is the same. Went to Seattle, Tacoma earlier this year. Tacoma has the biggest population I've ever seen. Um, yeah, I went to downtown Portland um, and they just have all these beautiful uh, city parks that are well-maintained and everything, but there wasn't like two square feet of that park that wasn't covered in like tents and things like that, which is sad. Sad both for the people who are, you know, forced to do it was that an invisible vigilant of sendar it certainly was <laughs> sad um both for the people that well probably saddest for the people who are forced to do that for whatever reason but then also to see such a beautiful place just covered with so much just human sadness kind of depressing but Portland was another place that had a lot of its own identity, but it still was. Well, Portland's kind of a kind of a mix between small town downtown area and big city downtown area. There was a little bit of both. Um, it probably, in terms of like shop and independent little stores and, and restaurants and everything, had is is more small town. It had more in common with uh, downtown Jackson Hole, of all places, which because it's like political leanings and population and everything couldn't be more different but the whole uh small town uh vibe is the is the same between portland and uh in jackson hole um obviously there's more of a homeless population in portland than than jackson hole because jackson hole is basically just a resort town that's all anybody goes there for time for you to die um, it's kind of like New York in that sense. Uh, last time we went to New York City, um, it was one of the cleanest places I've ever been. And that was because uh, we visited somebody who lived there and they were saying, yeah, I mean, crime just can't afford to live here. Um, which has its own problems, right? If you're... If you're paying four thousand dollars a month for a studio apartment that's not cool but maybe you'll have less crime oh all kinds of problems man i'm getting depressed
Okay. Skyrim. Wow, look at this beautiful place. <laughs> oh, we got wolves. So yeah, now we're heading to Morthal, which is a place I haven't been before. I guess I could just ride a carriage there, but I feel like the shaman here would rather see the countryside. Maybe we can camp out under the stars at some point on the way here too. Uh, it's getting a little late. It's still probably between six and seven. A super small town and homeless is, is even increasing here. Yeah, nobody's immune. It's everywhere. My town only has 900 people and another 150, 200 if you count college kids who live here during the school year from Philly, New York. Uh, last time I went to Scranton, yeah, there were a lot of college kids. There was more college kids running around than, than anybody else. Um, they actually have a really good university system out there that a lot of people want to go to for like medical stuff um and i feel like if they could somehow leverage because that's a huge influx of money right uh kids who are going to college especially that many if you could somehow leverage that that, that could bolster your economy a lot make things a lot better for a lot of people Everyone carries, though, so we don't worry. Can't remember if that's still the old NLA weather on that north. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I've i done it, <laughs> I don't know, three years ago now. Uh, it could be. It's, um... The weather. It's uh, Obsidian Weather and... Rudy E and B. Don't know if there's some pieces of NLA in it though, patched in. Uh, and for what it's worth, uh, I've used Obsidian for a long time, and uh, Dusk and uh, Sunrise, Dawn and Dusk are are. We're both overly dark in both of those. For every uh, obsidian weather uh, profile that I've ever used. Even older, yeah. Scranton has a population of 65,000. The University of Scranton is actually a really solid university. Yes, definitely is. And they're converting a lot of the, a lot of those old houses and everything. They uh, converted them into duplexes and like dorm rooms and now cheaper living quarters for college students and stuff. <clears throat> you went back to Obsidian. Tweak the reshade though to get the look I have now though. Oh, nice. Um, I still have to drop in. I've been meaning to to drop in on one of your um, Skyrim streams but uh it's hard for me a lot when it's during the work day uh, especially lately i've been really busy that seems to be another running theme is companies trying to do more with less employees everybody i talk to has been just getting drowned with work uh in their full-time jobs working way too many hours doing way too many jobs um Oh my goodness. Uh, so yeah, I've been like sometimes if it's a lighter work day for me, I can drop in and. But I haven't even had like the uh, attention span to be able to lurk on anybody's streams like during the work day. Every once in a while, I'll like pop in and say, "Hey, what's up?" But for the most part, I just I got to be focused on my job because I got too much to do.
Don't over your work. No, yeah, I know. Um, that's what I'm always telling my wife, and then I don't follow my own advice. <laughs> When things are going well, it's like, okay, when things are going busy, yeah, I got to buckle down and I really have to get things done. Um, but when things are going well and my workload is a little lighter, I, I have action items that I know really well and don't have to put my full effort into. I'm better at, you know, uh, doing a lighter work day or, you know, cashing in on some hours owed. Things like that. I'm not in crunch mode all the time. <laughs> At some point, I can feel like the stress welling up, and I'm like, okay, I need, I need to slow down. I need to make some more time for myself, or I need to get more sleep, or I need to get more exercise, or something. And I'm, I'm usually pretty good at listening to myself that way. Oh my god, this is the problem with the ritual stone and the wolves. They will come after you first. Regular wolves I can take. It's the ice wolves. Getting beset by ice wolves is, is the is the problem there, right? Wolves have some really good alchemical ingredients, even if you're not perking into alchemy. Uh, with Hunter Born, anyway. Vanilla, you could probably take it or leave it, but those canine teeth and the hearts and stuff that you get, uh, the wolf eyes... Very much worth it. Ooh, coffee. Yeah, I just I just re-upped my caffeine. I'm good now. I'm good now, but I was dragging a little bit there toward the middle of the stream. That's actually what I was doing when I was getting up. I was just refreshing my uh I had I filled up my glass of water. I got myself a little caffeinated beverage, and I had a little bit of Halloween candy. Got so much of it left. We only got um, one group of trick-or-treaters this year. Uh, last year, I feel like we had like a half a dozen groups or so. Um, people are doing the more trunk-or-treat stuff. Uh, doing more like a tailgate thing for their trick-or-treating these days than, than going around the neighborhood. But that's kind of sad, too. I kind of miss the old days of just seeing, like, when I was a kid, everybody was out on the streets uh, doing trick-or-treating. It was... Everybody was showing off their costumes, like people you never see on a daily basis, but that you live so close to. And it was a big thing. And now it's like, yeah, people would just rather go do a tailgate thing and drink a bunch of beer. We also have a big uh, church um, right down the street from us that a lot of people in the neighborhood go to, and I I can't help but think they like to poo-poo on trick-or-treating a little bit. Still some of that old-school mentality about the origins of Halloween. They always have a big event going on on Halloween and stuff, too. Might be taken away from the crowds a little bit. Oh my god, why can't I hit you? You're right in front of me. Alright, let's just... Let our spirit bodyguard take care of it. You need the ignored by wolf stone or even the divine crusaders boots. Yeah, I'm just just getting stopped on the road like every five seconds by the wildlife out here. Now, where the hell is my horse? Gotta love convenient horses. Here she comes. Good girl. 
It's just the Ice Wraith stream at this point. It sure is. Nothing but Ice Wraiths. All Ice Wraiths all the time. Uh, I know this is tedious, but fully reading the stones up to the throat. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Yep, yep. Uh, that's called... Um... Oh, geez, I don't remember. It gives you a temporary perk. It lasts like, yeah, 24 hours in game, stops all the animal attacks. It is tedious. Uh, I would almost rather just fight the animals <laughs> than doing that whole thing. Walking the 7,000 steps. Uh, I just wish there was an easier way to obtain that. Maybe like a perk or something in the speech tree or something like that, or the illusion tree, or maybe just make the damn perk permanent, right? Instead of being 24 hours. Just be like, all right, you are a uh, kind's homie now. You're not going to get attacked by anybody. Little overpowered, but at least it's like useful at that point, right? In my opinion, BGS is a little too obsessed with its own balance. They always do a terrible job at difficulty balance anyway. So it's like, why are they worried about what's overpowered? Let us cook, right? Starfield has the same issue. They're so stingy with those legendary weapons. Um, you know, just like be a little more giving with those items of power. Uh, I think players are going to have more fun. The hell? All those Luna Moths just completely disappear. These Luna Moths, I am going to chase them down because each one of them is an invisibility potion and they also have uh, a light armor potion to them or a light armor effect on them. For alchemy, so these are very, very useful for this character, even without any perks in the alchemy tree. They are very much worth hunting down. And with the third person selection mod that I have running, uh, makes it even easier for you to grab them. Still have to chase them down a little bit, but once you get close enough, it'll select it for you automatically. Voice of the sky, that's what I'm thinking of. That mod that EJ uses to make wildlife change uh, their AI account. Oh yeah, that's been around forever, right? Um, it's nice, but... It, so much of my character concepts are so combat focused that I want stuff to fight, right? It gets to be a pain in the butt for traversal and things like that. But at the end of the day, I would rather have stuff to fight than, than stuff that's just like docile, you know? Kind of... It uh, adds to the longevity of a playthrough when when your build concepts uh, have a, are so involved with combat and like play styles and things like that. Gotta have stuff to fight. There's a speak with animals perk, which allows you to call an animal as your companion. You can release them whenever you want. Right, but that doesn't, that doesn't avoid animals attacking you. It just gives you like an animal minion to help fight against them. Uh, Ordinator, I think, has, um, no, Ordinator has some stuff in the speech tree, I think, but nothing that really calms animals. Uh, there's Kind's Peace, which is the shout, but that's, that's a targeted calm effect that doesn't just generally make everything. I am running a mod called, um, One with Nature, I believe, and that allows me to come through here and just kind of check which kind of animals um, are like the wolves. I could just say they're allied, friendly, cowardly, or defensive. Uh, vanilla, they're just aggressive, right? So I could come through here and, and set everything if I really wanted to. But yeah, like I said, end of the day, I, I want to have more things to fight than not. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what do you think you do? I didn't do anything. You're the one who lit that thing on fire, buddy. Blaming me for some shit you did. 
Uh, did you check out Spirally's new overhaul for butterflies? And no, I have not seen that. Uh, I, I tend to just look at the Nexus once or twice a week anymore. Um, and if there's not some like specific gameplay overhaul or uh, gameplay tweak or uh, engine fix or something, I, I usually kind of disregard it and it's like, okay, I'll, I'll just pick it up on my next uh, modding effort the next time I have to remod the game. Um, but that might be interesting to see. Okay. All right, let's do that now. I got about, um, you know, five, six minutes left on my stream window. So let's go check out those mods. Um, James wanted me to check out the... Uh, uh, obscure magic mod so we can do that and we can check out uh, Magus's link here too spirally's be oh wow these do look nice that's very high quality this is like right up close and personal too wow somebody put a lot of effort into this one small little part of the game this like how much effort went into this. This is why modded Skyrim is <laughs> is always going to be relevant, is always going to hold a candle to the newest, greatest, latest uh, AAA games ever, because they have an army of developers in the modding scene that uh, is willing to work for free without deadlines. There's not really any way that a AAA studio can compete with anything like this, right? No deadlines, unlimited pool of development resources that work for free. And you get stuff like this. One little small part of the game that most people are just gonna run past and never see. They put so much time and effort and blood, sweat, and tears into. That's really pretty, look at that. Even like the more plain Jane ones have so much detail, like the, I don't know, I want to call them veins or something, but the little, those little sort of lines that go through the wing. Very cool. Lots of detail, ooh, Luna Moth. Do they glow? Do they work with um, the extra light sources? Like what I have going on right now with the, with the EMB? I'm sure you can get a patch for it, if not. And in the base game, if you're not running CACO, there's only three different types of butterflies. You get the the blue butterflies, the monarch butterflies, and the, the luna moths, right? It looks like there are a lot more butterflies. Do these all fit into those three different types? Oh, these actually add, yeah, 14 new butterfly species. I wonder if they all have their own alchemical ingredient or effects and stuff. That's pretty cool. Probably not something I'm going to add to my list anytime soon, but maybe hopefully sometime in the distant future when I have to <laughs> when I have to remod everything. It'll fit in. That's cool. That looks beautiful. Uh, now I do want to check uh, Obscure Magic. Kitty Tail, there we go. Twelve new spells across four magic schools with diverse... Visuals and effects with uh, SPID enemies and sometimes allies will utilize most of the new spells in combat as well. That's cool. Spell tomes can be found at fixed spots in the world, sold by specific magic vendors and obtained rarely from certain types of enemies. Okay, cool. So they're part of the Stones in list your I ask what side you're on. Terrible video quality. That's not 1440p. Oh, it's coming back now. Good. Adric Scepter. That's, that's cool. Radiant Oppression. 30 points of damage per second. 
additional 30 points of damage to the undead. So these are like Templar, uh, Crusader, Paladin type spells. In the current setup, so you've seen how good it is. They now have legs too. <laughs> Patches free CA, CO, Apothecary, and all that. Yeah. Cool, cool. It's all in the foam mod. Very cool. With ENB light. That's awesome. All new types, new ingredients. I like to mention an armor called Valhalla Rogue Rising. Okay, we'll take a look at that here real soon too. So let's deal Vortex. Yeah, these spells are kind of crazy. Kitty Tail to make some good stuff. I haven't added it in yet. I have a lot of magic mods already in my in my list. <laughs> I'm running Apocalypse, Triumvirate, Forgotten Magic Redone, Arcanum, Odin. Uh, getting them all to play nice together can be a challenge, but so far it's been it's been good. I don't mind going a little crazy with the magic. For me, a mage type character is all about like flexibility. Wow, this music is really loud, isn't it? What mod is this? This is Obscure Magic. This is one that James Ansel pointed out to me. Uh, here, I can post the link in the description here. Oops. Why not add the Dereni Magic mods? That's another one. I, I try to stay um, an Irim centric, uh, but yeah. I will look at, you know what? Let me list all these here. You two to do. Dereni magic. Obscures magic. Um, I have more than enough magic to keep me busy for a long time. Um, I still have uh, ideas for builds for build guides rattling around in my head for uh, Forgotten Magic, Redone, and Arcanum, uh, both of which, you know, you can center entire builds around some of those spells, and uh, Forgotten Magic Redone itself has <clears throat> uh, its own synergies built in, uh, kind of like Triumvirate, stuff like that. Um, I still need to get through the rest of the Triumvirate archetypes. Um, I've done the Shadow Mage and the Druid, um, and those are probably my two most popular <laughs> build guides on YouTube. Um, people seem to really like the Triumvirate-centered stuff. So I need to get back to that. I've touched on it a little bit with the uh, Nemesis Arcane Archer. Um, with the Warlock stuff. And I'm touching a little bit on the Shaman stuff with this with this build as well. But um, people seem to really like the, the Triumvirate archetype-focused stuff. That's been by far my, my most popular video so far. Um, so I want to get the rest of those done, um, and I want to do some Arcanum-focused stuff. I want to do some Forgotten Magic Redone-focused stuff. Um, this stuff looks really cool and interesting, too. I have put it on my list for future um, profile list. Let's let's take a look at Dereni. Uh, let's see, you wanted to look at the Valhalla Rogue Rising? That sounds familiar. I think I probably saw that. Is it this clear one? Want to try? Fendrix is another one. Fendrix uh, is kind of like the scaled backed one. It was the colorful magic uh, that was the big one, right? Well, no, colorful magic and something else. Fendrix was another big one. I believe there are patches for Sereni mods with Vokri perk trees. Nice. Uh, I use Ordinator. I'm an Ordinator guy. I like the uh, the breadth of the different kind of builds and playstyles that it affords. Um, uh, Vokri is more for balance, I think. Uh, Ordinator is more for you want to do different builds, do Ordinator. A day black version? Okay. Uh, let's see. I just click on one of these here. Hopefully, there's no nudity in it. 
Okay, good. Some big old boobies, but no nudity. That's good. So I can find probably the... Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a... <laughs> that's a cool set, for sure. It's a little, um... I don't know. I, oh, the dark version. This looks pretty cool. Boobs for days. I don't do a whole lot of uh, female characters. Uh, it's not to say that I won't. But when I do, I like I like the more coverage stuff. Uh, like the North Girl stuff is, is really cool, I found. Um, and there's some other stuff that has like lewd options, but I but I like the uh, the more uh, practical stuff. <laughs> uh, there was some stuff from the uh, what was it um, the Tuco guide uh, that had very modular armor that you could get like the the fully pantsed version or like the bikini version, and I always went with the fully um, the fully pantsed versions because some of those look really really good, um, you know if they're actual armor and not just bikinis, right? Yeah, waifu stuff. Um, as far as armor and stuff, I like stuff that's a little more subdued, a little more rooted in reality. So for armor and weapons, I, I don't like the, the you know, high fantasy type um, black desert online, like really uh, sort of Japanese out um, Japanese MMO style stuff. I like the more rooted in in reality stuff but then for like the magic i like to go crazy with a little bit the magic and perks i like to go crazy with uh with the the equipment i like to stay a little more rooted i, I like the dichotomy of the two things there i mean this is a really high quality set and everything i'm not saying i don't like it probably wouldn't fit with a lot of the stuff that i do cool set though it's the body mod that the person's using. I believe there is a full coverage. Yeah, we saw the full coverage versions there. There are some fully legged versions like, like that's the bikini version. This is the more fully. And yeah, it would look cooler without like the comically sized uh, boobs and hips there. <laughs> She's thick, boy. I think the best thing of the mod is the lanterns. We were just talking about the obscure magic stuff. There's a different style of the match that I like. Yeah, no, the magic stuff looks great. Um, very interesting. Stuff, definitely stuff that you could you could create builds off of for sure. Uh, my build backlog is really really long right now. <laughs> I already got stuff in my game that uh, I plan on doing builds off of right now. So. It, I, I might get to this stuff at some point, but it'll be far in the future. Um, but no, this definitely seems like a really good mod for sure. It, it seems to seems to stand up against all the all the popular stuff anyway. Um, okay, there was one that I thought there was one more thing to look into here too. Fenderix magic. I think we know about Fenderix. Oh, the Dureni magic. Okay, Dureni also has uh, created a spell pack called Inquisition, if I recall correctly, which will fit your paladin. Nice. Okay. Mega boobs. <laughs> Some tig old bitties there, for sure. Uh, I like using 7 base body, body mod, but every now and then I use uh, 7 BO. Yeah, uh, I tend to use a body mod that will enable the most... Um, just the most universal fit out of everything. I think I'm with uh, th CBBE right now, but with the with the the smaller boob option of it. <laughs> Those big boobs bouncing all over the place really kind of tend to distract from things uh, a little bit. UNP I used a lot of too. Yeah, I mean, as long as it's good enough for me, I, I, I'm not really too picky with the body mod as long as, you know, it's compatible with a lot of different armors um, and it doesn't look out of place amongst all the other NPCs there.
How do you spell Dereni? Is it Da Reni or De Reni? Uh, I'm gay, but I still love Jiggle Physics. Well, hey, Jiggle is, uh, <laughs> everybody loves seeing stuff that jiggles, right? Uh, it's not a sexual preference or, or gender type thing. Um, that's why I think everybody loves Jello. But if it jiggles on a human body, it's even, it's even better, right? <laughs> uh, just search for Natura and click the, uh, pry file name. Search for Natura. Natura. Profile name. Oh, Natura is is tough to search for because it's going to find everything that's that's na natural, right? You'll find Dereni Dareni. Nothing in Dereni. <laughs> Jello works. Um Well shit. I mean I guess I could do a search for it. Yeah, nothing found. Maybe nature a space? No, that's just... Oh, okay. No, that's finding everything... Uh, Natura Spe Spanish Edition. Okay. So then we can find... There we go. Man, some really rough search terms here. Okay, and then you want to check the profile. Uh, da Reni. Gotcha. Here we go. Here we go. User files. We found it. We did some cyber sleuthing. Oh, Magus came through with the link. Oh, it's kind of the same thing, right? Okay, cool. We're there. There we go. We're there. <laughs> I got you, Magus. Uh, okay. Wow. This person has a lot of stuff. What were we looking for? Uh, was it arcane, maybe? Spells and enchantments? Necrotic, which is uh, necromancer-styled stuff. Magnus spell pack designed to be balanced around vanilla spells. I think I've, I've looked into some of this stuff before. So pull through shadows basically on this. type this ages ago <laughs> you have a mod list with all of them that's cool d-a-r-e-n-n -N. yeah it just it didn't show up in the search bar for some reason d-a-r-e-n-i-i -I. well there it is okay maybe i was just mistyping it sorry folks i'm sure you're probably screaming at the screen as i was just doing not doing what you wanted I know how that can be frustrating. Every time I try to watch a new, uh, every time I try to watch Gopher struggle through a new game, I'm just screaming with rage. It's like, you're doing it wrong. How are you not figuring this out? I think the issue for me personally is that I've used Apocalypse, FMR, Triumvirate for so long, everything else I wind up comparing it to those mods. Yeah, I mean, me too. And there does seem to be a lot of overlap between especially what uh, Apocalypse and Triumvirate are doing with what a lot of these other spell packs are doing, which uh, Triumvirate and Apocalypse do so many wild things um, that, of course, there's going to be some overlap with anybody trying to do anything unique, right? Doesn't mean it's better or worse or that it's not worth having. It's just, yeah, I'm in the same boat. It's like I'm comparing this as like, oh, this is just pull through shadows, except it puts the enemy back after a few seconds.
some cool stuff. Arcane distortion in a large area around the caster and return them after. Yeah. So it's just kind of a tweak on pull through shadows. Uh, probably would work better for the uh, scorpion build because it allows you to pull one enemy and not like splash damage pull everybody until you get to the master level spell. Um, this might also hook up to uh, Spell Scribe, which uh, Pull Through Shadows was not able to do. So this might have been a good one to have for the Scorpion build. <laughs> uh, da Ren Ni. Da. A R E N I I. I put it on my list of things to look into, though, so I can add it to a, a, a future profile. Maybe add it to a build concept at some point. Oh, by the way, think, comment on build me. Oh, yeah, no problem. Enjoy your insights, James, always. To get my uh, ninja skills for Skyrim stuff. <laughs> Um, even trying Odin and Vokri makes me miss Ordinator and Apocalypse. Yep, me, me too. It's just, you can just do more with Odin or with uh, Ordinator and Apocalypse. I still have Odin because I like the balance tweaks that it does to the vanilla stuff, and it does add some unique uh, spells that Apocalypse doesn't even have. So I, I do run Odin on, uh, underneath Apocalypse. Arcane Spell Mod does damage based on... Uh... MR, uh, is that like Magicka you have in the tank or? Probably in the power list, huh? Twice as much to Magicka for 10 Magicka, okay. This is what you're talking about. Yeah, I like stuff that scales with Magicka. Um, Vanilla Skyrim has a, a big scaling problem with its with its damage with its damage, right? Um, it doesn't scale. It just doesn't scale, uh, which is something that Ordinator does fix. So you can use um, it, it scales with your uh, destruction skill at least. Um, Restoration does the same thing. Uh, Forgotten Magic handles it in other ways, uh, things like that. Um, but this handles it based on uh, Magicka, it looks like, which is cool. This is kind of how like uh, the Undying. Spirit works. Undying Ghost. Magic of Resistance. That's awesome. That helps a little bit. As long as it scales with something, it's, it's better than vanilla, right? <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, we're over time, and I really need to get ready for going out. I gotta make sure I'm sexy enough to go out in public, right? I'm sexy enough to be on the internet, but I'm not sexy enough to, to be out in public. <laughs> it's just funny to think. Um, I do need to wash my stinking ass, though. That's one thing. Uh, okay, so thank you guys very much for joining me. You know I love hanging out with you guys, playing some video games and, and talking about shit. Good stuff. Um, thanks a lot for hanging out. Uh, if you like this and you happen upon it randomly, uh, do check out the links in the description below. There's some similar content uh, with some people who are in chat right now. Speaking of, uh, Magus has a Twitch channel. He's in the midst of a, uh, or are you still remodding? I think. You had some restart itis, right? You uh, started either yesterday or tomorrow? I think it was yesterday you started. He's probably gonna stream at some point today. He's always streaming something. So uh, go leave him a follow, check his stuff out. Um, Maldoroth as well. Uh, I just came from his stream before I started this one. Uh, he's always a chill dude to hang out with. We're contributing to Karn's delinquency. We're terrible <laughs> indeed. No, I don't mind. Uh, just have to pick up the pace a little bit. Um, remodded, remodded and started yesterday. That's what I thought. There we go. Yeah, I've been out of the loop a little bit. Uh, I'll try to catch up with you maybe tomorrow. I'll be busy all day today. Um, and tomorrow is football day. But I'll, I'll try to catch up with you at some point. <laughs> I'll, I'll join the stream here before too long. Um, is there anybody else? Caladran has some has some content on her channel that she puts out. Uh, I am still uh, in the midst of watching her latest Bossin Orc Warrior playthrough, um, and her links are in the description below as well. She has the uh, um, uh, fanfic 
writing that she does too that's always fun to look at anybody else anybody else here i think we're good all right guys that's it for me uh take it easy till next week anyway uh and i will see you then see you guys gotta find the right button to push okay i found it bye guys